It's time to hack the movies. Today, we're talking about tapes. Hi, everyone. Tony from Hack the Movies here. And today I got with me Carl from Who Are These Podcasts. Hey, Hello, Carl. look at me. I'm here in the studio. <laughs> you did it. You it's made happening. it, buddy. You made it. You're, you're going to be you. way more famous now. I can't uh, wait. <laughs> What's that going to be like? You could tell me. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you. Everything. All right, cool. <laughs> mm. uh, and we have Doug from Good Times, Great Movies. Tony, thanks for having me. I choose to only sniff fame. Yes. I don't want to break into it the way you two have. <laughs> Plenty of time for that after the show, man. <laughs> but yes, I'm glad we all got together to talk about this great, great film, Private Parts, the Howard Stern movie. Uh, a movie that when I was younger was probably one of the like most influential films I ever watched. This movie had a really profound effect I on me. I saw it in the okay. theater when it came out. Yeah. I, was a, I was a Howard Stern fan. I remember... Yeah. Listening to him every morning when he was making the movie, yeah, got you, oh. it was the best advertisement. That's all ever. you talked about. That's all you talked about was the movie. Wait, so wait, you were like, psyched about so it. So talking about how you're making a movie on your show is a good way to get people excited for the movie. Yes, yes. Okay. write that down. Write that we're down. Not quite there yet. <laughs> you have to make sure you have millions of viewers hack, and or listeners. Hack the well, movies. Well, that's why I the put movie. in this eight <laughs> All right, great. No, yeah. it will not be a that's hack. Right, yeah. <laughs> All right. This ep- by the way, before we get into that, uh, this episode is brought to you by our commentary track I did with Carl, where we watched a movie about a guy who inserted himself in the movie. We did Sutter and John's One Too Many. I'm exhausted from that. It's really it, it goes like, on forever. <laughs> yes, uh, not very good. But check that out on both our Patreons. I also watched the movie and they locked me out of the. <laughs> Poor Doug. So was prepped to do that show with us and didn't get here. So I, mean, oh, I could not be more depressed. I'm sorry. I'm sorry <laughs> that things got moved. I'm sorry. No, but I have to live with having seen <laughs> that movie. It has nothing to do with the fact that I wasn't involved in the commentary. I watched it. Yeah. You I'm know not- what? I'll have him call in to WATP. <laughs> Yes. Well, we can Terrible. talk about it for like, I don't know, 30 seconds. Oh, okay. Yes. Get, yeah, get everything off your that. chest yeah, about it, and then we'll, we'll so, bury yeah, it. Um, like I said, it's one of the most influential films that ha- had this effect on me. And now that I watched it, I this movie, the name of the episode, this movie is strangely relatable. Yeah. Uh, not the millions of dollars <laughs> part. That's not no. relatable yet. Uh, You're not as famous as Howard Stern? Uh, it's hard News to, to me. It's hard to actually, no, I guess in certain age demographics, I might be more oh, famous Jesus. than Howard Stern. This fucking guy. Uh, this guy could knock it out of his own way. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I don't know why people think I'm being serious. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, a little background on this movie. It's based off the book, which I have here. Have any of you actually read it? Oh, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. no, I have not read the book. Oh, really? Yeah, so the book, it's weird. The book are just, he does go into his history and his backstory, but it's mostly like little vignettes and his philosophy on everything and his wife. So that's left over from the movie. Uh, and there's it's actually, all about Allison. Huh? The, it's, it's, always yeah, been, yeah. it's always been about Allison. And by the way, uh, the entire film. <laughs> <there is, laughs> they got divorced like three years later. <laughs> there is a whole out. chapter, uh, Carl, and I, I know you're excited for this. There's a whole chapter on stuttering John. So anyway, the movie is about his like philosophy. The book is about his philosophy and little stuff. We could um, do that on Hack the Books. Yeah. yeah all right. right, right Let's right, talk right, about exactly, the film yeah, yeah. that we all but, enjoy. Um, and so I don't he, know if I'd refer to two paragraphs as a chapter. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's overstating it. So he tried to get a movie made forever, like Fartman. He wanted yeah. to make a Fartman oh, yeah. movie. Right. I don't know why. That's like a funny bit. I don't know if you can stretch a movie out of that. But Who knows? Um, it seems like a yeah. terrible idea. And that's also something he talked about. For such a yeah. long time yeah. on his radio show. Oh, just, just like Howard Stern in the high school years? Trying to get it made. Dude, that was a bad idea. That was a terrible I'm glad idea. that didn't get yeah. made. But yeah. still, he talked about it all He talked about it all the time. Yep. And all I was thinking of was like, Howard, you don't know why people like cartoons. You're not understanding <laughs> yeah, right. what would make this funny. Like, no, but it's great. I get picked on and there's black kids with bigger penises than me. Yep. It's like, yeah. no, this is not This is not a good <laughs> premise. Also, also, Howard, you're a little hung up on that. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, um, a little bit. So He's got the, his bits. You yeah. Know. So the book came out. And since the book doesn't have like a real narrative structure, uh, 22 scripts were written and he rejected all of them. Yes. And then the studio, <laughs> this is my favorite, the studio guessed that he was too scared to act and that's why he was rejecting them. So they were like, how about we get Jeff Gold? Oh. Bloom. He's like, no, no, it's gotta be me. It's gotta be me. Uh, and then Ivan. Wrote, I didn't know that they were yeah. gonna maybe have Jeff Goldblum play yes. Howard. They thought he was rejecting it on purpose because he was too scared to act, so he was making up excuses. I would watch a Jeff Goldblum. Me too. Stern I was biopic. thinking the same thing. That would be fun. amazing. I mean, the, the could you, window was narrowing. Yeah, on you that. Imagine, one not, is dead yet, so you know yeah. that we could do that, guys. This is clearly made up. Could you imagine a world where Howard Stern like comes up with an excuse to not do something? No, no, no. Definitely That's not. clearly right. fake. Right. Clearly okay. fake. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, Ivan Reitman is the one who said, hey, let's make this like a biopic 
with like a little bit of like a documentary feel sure. to it, which I think was the right way to do it. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah. I, let me say right off the bat. So I was watching the movie again today. Yeah. I, I saw it when it came out. It holds up. It's still a it's good extremely movie. Extremely well. Yeah. Yes. I was a little nervous. I, I probably, this is probably honestly only the third time I saw it. Oh, okay. I watched this movie in the theater with my mom. <laughs> my mom is a huge Howard Stern fan. No like, shit. Huge. You were saying your mom's a big yes, yes, Stern yes, fan too. Yeah. And she, she knew this movie was coming out. I was about 18, 19 years old at the time. She's like, let's go. We went. It was an uncomfortable yeah, experience uncomfortable. for me at times. Right. But yeah, yeah, like that's how I got into Howard Stern. My alarm in fourth grade went off yeah. to our local station that played Howard Stern. I listened to him from then until probably a year or two before COVID. Yes. That was, oh, <laughs> yeah. You need to jump off before. Yeah. That was oh, the right time. God. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm a little younger, but like, uh, that's mm -hmm. not a brag. <laughs> um, you don't I, look younger, so it's yeah. fine. Oh, I age hardly. <laughs> you look like shit. Yeah, I know. Yes. I know. So no one was just like, oh, geez, he's sure is bragging <laughs> over there. I was like, you're younger than us? <laughs> what the hell? I'm, I'm glad I bring in people who've never been on the show, and they know some of the inside jokes the other cast members do, where they say, I'm 50, I'm 60, I'm pushing. So anyway. We don't know those jokes. It's just pretty obvious. <laughs> it's pretty obvious. But anyway, uh, my, mom, my mom listened to it very, very young. So I saw this movie at a young age. At first, I saw it... Uh, uh, Friend's dad had it on pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. So and the first scene I saw was the naked woman, yeah. like Jenna Jameson. The Jenna Jameson scene. Yeah, and I was like, this is the most naked I've ever seen someone for that long. She looks so good. Yeah. She looks in amazing. this movie. She looks amazing. It's it, you couldn't draw a naked girl better yeah. than what Jenna Jameson looks like. But you're right. Like if in you this movie. if you grew up sometimes watching rated R movies, you didn't see full frontal for the way that, that it long, is to on linger this. on it yeah. for right. that long. Right. right. Um, but yeah, then years later, they played it on USA, I think, which had like a nine year deal to stream it. But mm -hmm. that was like the weird one where like Howard would come on because they had to censor stuff and yep. make jokes. And I don't remember that version. I remember the pixelated nudity, but I don't remember him to. I want to hunt down a copy of that TV version. It was very bizarre because they would at times they would pause it. Yes. And he'd walk out and he'd just we talk and they'd fast forward through certain scenes. I mean, that's like a that. funny thing to do. No, I love that rather than dumping in just yeah. a bunch of fake curse words or chopping stuff completely out. Yeah. It's yeah. a funny way to do it. And I would assume, I don't know, you have the DVD there. I don't know if it's on Blu-ray or whatever. Like, that'll be a great cut. To I'd have to check. This is like an old, this is an old DVD. Yeah. We, we should all sign this and give it away to a fan. I think I'm time. I'm oh, I think we should sell it for hundreds of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know what, Carl? I think the women on this show <laughs> give it away. Ghostbusters 2016. I think they can get away with it. I don't think uh, we're getting three hundred bucks. So? No. You don't think the Carl um, Hamburger uh, signature is <laughs> worth that much? <laughs> so uh, this movie is directed by the the classic Betty Thomas. Yes. Sure. Yeah. Who did went on to make some great films like Alvin and the Chipmunks, The Squeakwell. <laughs> Right. I mean, a, a <laughs> everyone needs a paycheck. That is a paycheck. Everyone needs a paycheck. Is that that Ivan Reitman down. made uh, Junior. Ivan Reitman produced Ghostbusters Afterlife, and that sucked too. We that all make bad movies. Fucking movies sure. suck so bad. I hate <laughs> oh it. He goes, God, we all you. make bad movies. He's lumping himself in with Ivan Reitman. Oh my God, thank <laughs> like you. Like so me much. and Ivan, we make some bad movies sometimes. We make some bad movies. Um, yes, and speaking of Ivan Reitman, the writer, uh, one of the writers, Len Blum, did uh, Stripes and Meatballs. <laughs> okay. Great. Uh, right. yeah. I tried to look up what else they did, and I think they also had a weird career. Stripes this is a weird movie. It is. Because it's a comedy that becomes serious. Yes. It gets and like real serious for some reason. You're like, wait, what just happened yeah. here? It's also a comedy that becomes unwatchable in like the last 20 yeah. minutes. Yeah, like, it's I, good I, until it's, it's not. It's great and then it's <laughs> yeah. good and then it's just a movie it's weird, after a while. Yeah. So yeah, um, many Stern show regulars make an appearance in this. Sure. Uh, and we'll get into this movie. Um, so I, I did want to say, because we were talking about Jenna Jameson, yeah. there's some like gratuitous sex scenes yes. in the movie. And I think Howard had to do that. Like one of the first scenes, he's checking out this chick in the airport and her bra is like busting out or boobs. I, I, I have it in my notes here. Um, the CGI there, that must have been a monumental achievement. Right. Visual effects. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Could you point. imagine how much that cost in 1997 just oh, yeah. to do that? With, with the rotoscoping <laughs> you'd have to do? That's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, the reason why I wanted to bring it up though is because like people expected that from Howard Stern. Yes. Yeah, you know, he was yeah. the guy talking about sex and having naked girls in the studio. What's crazy is that we just watched one too many. Yes. And you fast forward over 10 years later and Suttering John's doing the exact same thing. But not as funny. No. It's and not as good. Not, not, not as well done. No it doesn't make any effect. sense. <laughs> it's just like thrown in there. Like there's so many things. 
I don't want to turn this into the Southern John stuff, yeah. but there's so many things from this movie that like oh, Southern yeah. John just Car- stole. Carl, are you known for derailing stuff to talk about Southern John? I'm not. Oh, I okay, always okay. stay on point. <laughs> I'm focusing on private parts. That's what we're talking about today. So yeah, This the, is when you splice in Kagia. Yeah. And just- <laughs> So you're right about putting all of the sex stuff in the beginning. You also have him as Fart Man right in the beginning. Yes. And also in the beginning, you get 10,000 cameos. John oh, Stamos. Yes. Phenomenal. Who in real life, it was some other actor who did the MTV. It was 90210, Luke Perry. Yeah, Luke, Luke Perry, Perry, yes. And then yeah. he thought it wasn't going to be good. But it's like one scene. Why not do it? Well, like, because he actually what? was the guy next to Fartman. He's like, this is not good. <laughs> Why are you putting this in your movie? <laughs> he was like, I remember that. That was embarrassing. <laughs> that was a disaster. So, yes, uh, you get John By the way, can and we I talk was about. 25 years old playing a teenager on 90210. <laughs> and that was the worst that moment was of my career. <laughs> So can we talk about that real quick? Because I yeah. remember the MTV uh, Music Awards when okay. Howard Stern was on there as Fartman. Yeah. And so they kind of recreate that, yep. which is neat. Except for, did you see the audience reaction to Fartman yeah. in his movie? People are losing their minds. Yeah, it wasn't like that. jumping up out of their chairs, going nuts. What really happened was everyone in the audience had no idea who Howard Stern was. No. And went, what the fuck is going on? I was like, what the fuck is happening <laughs> right now? I know Luke Perry. He's cool. First I saw What's Luke this? Perry walk out, I was like, I don't <laughs> know. Hell's fart, man. Uh, but yeah, you get so many cameos from like, I think Blues Travelers yeah, there. John, uh, a fat John Popper, which is the one I prefer. Yes. I do not want a skinny. Okay. John Popper. <laughs> Tiny Tim. I can out Last film role of Tiny Tim. Wow. What I love about this is because he's supposed to be backstage at the MTV Music Awards. So, of course, yes. Tiny Tim is there. Oh, yeah. Like, that makes no sense. What? You know, Flavor you Flav. Ozzy Osbourne and Flavor Flav. Like, people that would be yeah. at an MTV event. Yes. Not Tiny Tim. I What's he going to come out? That. I did take that as a purposeful <laughs> joke that was put yeah. in here. Yes. But even watching this, I was like, Tiny Tim was still alive in 97? Yeah. I had no idea when the guy um, died. You ever see uh, that horror movie Tiny Tim's in? You got to check that yeah, out. Yeah. Uh, Blood Harvest? Blood Harvest. Yes. It's pretty good. It's, it's pretty it's great. Fucked up. Uh, Do you two movie guys want to get a room or something? I couldn't. <laughs> you just want to switch spots? So, um, <laughs> so Howard decides to bore that woman with the CGI boobs on the plane with his life story. Okay, but the best part about that is that he has the newspaper laying on the, the seat. <laughs> yeah. She picks up the newspaper, and on the front page of the newspaper is a, an article about Fartman. Above the fold, yeah. an article about Fartman. I can guarantee you, no one was writing articles about Howard Stern being Fartman on the MTV Music No, Awards. but here's what I will say, and this was a little bit confusing to me. You said 1997, Fartman, nobody knew Howard Stern. I d- does this woman know who Howard Stern is, or well, is she no, just no, no. like, look at this monster That's a good that question. I'm well, sitting movie, next to? Or the movie this at is this a- point, it be, it, the bookend is like 1990, I think, is when we're, oh, this movie's supposed okay. to take place. All right, yeah. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So yeah, he's still yeah. Also, the framing device of this being an entire story that he's telling this woman <laughs> on a is plane. What, like, if you really think about it, he's like, well, if you were to ask my wife on the street, she would say that my penis wasn't really small. It was adequate in size and it, it satisfied <laughs> women. Oh, now back to the story I was telling yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Like, the documentary weird, stuff yes. and the, the, the wraparound framing device. Right. They are kind of back and forth, yeah. but it works for some reason. Because I forgot at the end, he gets off the plane with the woman. I was yeah. like, this was a fucking story I that he was telling her. I totally forgot, forgot all that. about that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so we uh, we flash back to the early day of Howard, uh, days of Howard, and we get to see his dad, which is like some of the funniest stories you would tell with his dad who constantly oh. told him to shut, shut up. up. <laughs> Sit down, shut up. Right. Shut up. <laughs> Why do we live in Roosevelt when you work in New York? Shut up. I like when he decides he wants to be a performer and he puts on the puppet show and he has like a weird sex show. How did he yeah. get a gig at some like elderly community? Like, did his mom anyone get in. him that? Yeah, I want anyone in. She's probably like, I want to entertain the old people. Right. Okay. I like I like that his dad doesn't second. throw away the puppets. He puts them in like a box or yeah, something. Yeah, he's not allowed to play with them anymore. Yeah. Yeah. But I guess they were expensive. He doesn't lock and he puts them away and yeah, then right. closes the lid and leaves the attic. That's and that's that. it. <laughs> Um, and of course, if you know Howard, he always talks about how the demographic in his neighborhood had like a drastic change. Mm-hmm. Uh, and his, as all the other like whites and stuff were moving out yeah. of the neighborhood, his family were like, ah, we're going to stick it out. I got to tell you, we talked earlier about how this movie holds up. Yeah. 
I was so scared at this part of the movie. I'm like, oh man, how much racist shit am I going to have to sit through? But it was surprisingly brief yeah. for the amount he talks about it on his show. I and, think, and they call out the people who are being sure. racist. No, no, of course. Yeah, by the yeah. way, I don't think you can make a mainstream movie today where you get a little boy to say the N-word like 15 times. <laughs> no, probably so, not. No, 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 I was watching. No, I was like, shocking. I don't want to be one of those, oh, you can't do that today, guys. <laughs> yes, but I'm like, yeah. oh, you totally couldn't not do a, that today. Not a you mainstream wouldn't want to. movie. Not a mainstream <laughs> well, movie. Well, the, the funny thing is, though, is not that you couldn't do it. No one would want to do no that. No one would risk. We, we should probably get an eight-year-old to say the N-word a bunch of times. Like, <laughs> right. no, that's not. I yeah. guess the one thing that is accidentally racist is uh, he says their penises are so big. And I know, like, the black community is like, hey, that's kind of like a stereotype. We don't really like that. Hey, listen, though. The actors he got, <laughs> uh, it's not like I was checking out between their ass cheeks, but you could see a lot of flopping around when those guys walk by. We get it. You Pretty think they're very big. sexy. Those characters are in high school, though, so. Oh, Were you shit. still framing it? <laughs> what are just, you talking about? So just because I have some pics on my phone doesn't mean. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I love when he like tells his dad, "I want to be in the radio," and it's the best reaction. He's like, "You got to talk. You never say a word." <laughs> <laughs> which is which is really great. But I really do like the fact that his parents seem encouraging of him. Yeah, and he shows that in this movie. Like, I mean, this movie is nothing but sweet like when you boil it down right. you're like it's kind of like saccharine nonsense yeah. Yeah. with like boobs and stuff like that yeah. which i really really enjoy and you don't expect from him it's but also at the beginning of this movie he's like i want everyone to love me i want everyone to like me yes. and i feel like his career took quite a shift after this movie yeah when he started to have the celebrities king of all on, media when he became the king of all media calling in and i know we talked about john stamos but man once that guy started calling in i'm like I think Howard Stern just wants to get with your wife, but you're on a lot. You're calling in. I'm not saying I didn't enjoy the show after that, but it really did change. And I feel like this movie yeah. had a lot to do with that. Yeah. He was more acceptable. Really? Yeah. yeah I because he so. had Sam Kinison for years. Like he'd always had like his celebrity friends that yeah. would do the show. But I, I think regularly. Regularly. maybe, maybe I guess for some people, I didn't care, but I, maybe for some people it got a little too A list, maybe. I I'm sorry. Know. I think the show was still great. It wasn't until Marcy Turk came in. No, no. Yeah. And, and then it was like, uh, okay. you know, oh, let's have Hillary Clinton on and not ask her any real questions. Like, <laughs> yeah. well, what are we doing? Right. What's going yeah. on? Yeah. No, but you're right. When, no. uh, if you know Howard Stern in like the mid 2000s, he had that uh, dispute with the FCC and he went to satellite radio. Yes. And then when he sure. moved there, he put on some of the best shows. It, oh, yeah. Became great. fantastic. And satellite, yeah. sa satellite radio, they did a great like history of Howard Stern series. So I went back and I got to hear all the old stuff yep. from like the 80s and whatnot. They had a really good archive. I actually went to New York with my mom on his last day of terrestrial radio. We wanted to be like part of the celebration. Wow. Yeah, the train got delayed is two it, hours. Listen, here's this is so weird. You guys both. No, I got to tell you. Did you grow up in this area? Kind of? Uh, yeah. Ish. Like Philly. Yeah. It's Philly. If Philly picked him up so yes. quick. Yes. That was yes. Philly picked him the up second immediately. Market, right? After yeah. And my mom was all in. My dad, yeah. I don't know these listen to more than an hour of Howard Stern <laughs> is in, in his entire life. But, but my mom, every day, all day, she cleaned houses and would just crank Howard Stern alone in these houses cleaning. Dude, them. I got a portable she radio and would day. go to like school and just yeah. listen to it. Oh. But um, yeah, the uh we the train got delayed, so we missed all of the oh, oh, So shit. so we all hung out outside of Hard Rock Cafe because he was in there. Yeah. We're right. Hoping to get a glimpse of Howard. Yeah. And then a bunch of Opie and Anthony fans came and tried to like counteract us, and that glass bottle got thrown. We got to see Martha Stewart go into the wow. Hard Rock Cafe. And I'm like, well. It was so what a successful trip to New York. <laughs> but yeah, like we took off school and it like well, my mom not my mom. I took off school. Yeah. My mom took us out there, so we were real excited. But yeah, I got to I missed him. And now these days I'm like, well, I'm never gonna see him. He's never gonna leave his Florida house. But anyway, back to the movie. <laughs> um so yeah, I love this gag of him uh going to college and then he's just playing it's it's him as his current <laughs> age, and he even yeah. calls it out. He's like, for this movie, you gotta suspend your disbelief. It yeah. was um you know, sometimes you can reuse jokes from other movies. Stutter and John, not you. You're bad at it. Don't do it. But uh, Walk Hard, the Dewey Cox movie, yep. they do that where like uh, John C. Oh, Riley's right. like, I yeah. think I'm doing pretty good for a 15 year old. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. So the other thing that happens in this movie, and we were just talking about this with that mo that show Crashing with Pete Holmes. Yeah. I hate it when people have to show you how bad they were. And yeah. it's like the epitome of just being the worst ever. Yeah. So Stern gets on the radio at the college station. And immediately just has a disaster. Like the the record is broken and everything's falling apart. He's like, oh, what's going on? Like they had to show him being like just the worst possible person ever. Yeah. 
which is not believable because Howard yeah. Stern, like, okay, maybe he wasn't as good as he is now. I mean, or, it works for no. it's, it's the sound he makes where he goes, ooh, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> and it kills me every time. <laughs> it works because I don't expect physical comedy from this gangly okay. weirdo. You really and don't. No. Yeah, because you're so used to hearing him. Yes. And you actually did a Just good to job watch on him camera. fumble around with, I don't know, eight tracks or whatever the hell that was. Yeah. Like, it was... It was really delightful. He could have been in more fun. movies if he wasn't so weird. Like, he could have been a decent actor. Oh, he's, actor. he's oh, had opportunities. He has talked sure. about the down. many opportunities he's yep. had to be in films. I don't know. I never, I never found out this was real. I think they wanted to do, like, they wanted him to be Scarecrow in a Batman movie yep. once. Yep. And I was like, I don't know. Don't know if it's real, but he talked about it. So he once. talked about it a <laughs> lot. Uh, I don't know if it's real. Right. <laughs> I don't know how that would have went. Yeah. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, and at this point, we meet Allison. He loves Allison. This movie, if you take one thing away from this movie, it's Allison is the best person They'll be in together the world. forever, it's a love man. story. They'll yeah. be together forever. Howard would do anything for Allison. Yes. Except for listen to her bullshit. He just wants to paint <laughs> in his basement. Yes. <laughs> Leave him alone. God. So they divorced in 2001. Instead <laughs> of children, he wants cats, and he doesn't want to have to leave his house. Yes. I remember... Um, he was talking about it on a show like years ago. They're like, have you, someone asked me, have you gone back and like watch private parts since then? Oh really? And I think I remember him. If I'm right, uh, someone will call me out on it. I don't know how, I don't know if my audience is big stern it's problem with being famous. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. But I think I remember him saying like, he couldn't get too far into oh. it because of all the Allison stuff. No, it's like, course. yeah, that, that is a little rough if you focus so much it's your kind movie of your entire movie. It's kind of the, the entire, entire movie. point of the movie. When yeah. they got yes. divorced, did you listen when he allowed the staff to roast him on air? Yes. That was some of the best stuff I ever heard. Yes. And he shut it yeah. down after like an hour. <laughs> yeah, right. He was like, all right, we're done. We're done. I can't take it. Uh, I do want to say he tries to he tries to convince her. He tries to like hook up with her by putting her in her short film. I tried that in college. It did not work. Good, good job, Howard. Did you win? Uh, you win yeah. the first place for your movie? No, the of college I went There's to. The um, I mean, Carl, if you want to watch my thesis film, it's right there. <laughs> Is it really? I'll give you a copy. Let's pop it in. Oh, <laughs> let's watch okay. it right now. All right. Uh, I will say, my thesis film. Uh, my one teacher hated it. Uh, but at the end of the course, I and was, you were trying to date her. That no, 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 I was not trying to date her. Um, but at the end of the course, it was like me, my roommate, and like two other people are the only ones who actually had finished films. So she had to congratulate me. Oh, that's me. fantastic. Because yeah. all the people whose films she was really invested in, mm -hmm. they were like fuck ups and they didn't finish it. So she was like, good job on your movie. She was so mad that I pulled it off. That's, that's, that's your claim to fame that you completed the project? No, that's not a claim to fame. It's just that, that's what you're bragging about, right? You now. asked if I won it, if I got first place. <laughs> right. Right, for right. my film. You didn't get laid is the point. Yes, all I right. did it. I, I did once it. got to the end of a math test. I failed. <laughs> yeah, right. That, and I, I am an award-winning filmmaker, and it's not scored me a girl yet. So. No? It's not working for <laughs> no. you? Hey, I have an award-winning <laughs> filmmaker. I made a fake trailer about a gorilla, and yeah. everyone's like, yeah, that's nice. Goodbye. Yeah, we were like, uh, great. It doesn't count if you give yourself yeah. awards for the it. Point, the point is, the, uh, the movie's not the most realistic, even though it's based on a true story. <laughs> yeah, there's a few things in here. I'm like, there's no way that's how this went down. No. No, no, no. no. Which we'll Although, I will to. say, his, his short film... Uh, looks better than most of the shit people were making in college. It was kind of super fun. I was like, is there like a, a bonus feature of just this short film? Because I'd watch it. And talking about strangely relatable now, in college, I talked about this in another episode, but it didn't do well, so I'm telling the story again. I took like a uh, photo course, and the assignment was photograph God, so I just dressed up like Jesus and took a picture of myself. And then Howard Stern is dressing up like Jesus. In yes. this. I'm like, I'm like did, did I just... Did I like start acting out the movie in my life uh, without realizing? You weren't like your, you the it. other students that took a picture of money. Get it? Oh, Am I right? that's another uh, political uh, statement. Uh, what? Oh, Whoa. Hey, what? Oh. People were taking pictures of like mountains and like a river. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to dress up like Jesus. I'm going to have an axe wow. for no reason. <laughs> uh, I love how they introduce each segment with Baba Booey. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's fun. Yep. I, yeah. That's so funny. Because well, they bring in the Whack Packers. Yes. yes. Which is yes. great. I can't remember all of them. Uh, I know Gary. Crackhead the, Bob. Crackhead yep. Bob. Was so one of the first ones. that's not Gary ones. the special person, right? That's Crackhead Bob. Correct. Yeah. Okay. You can say Crack, Crackhead. Crackhead Bob. <laughs> you can Bob say Crackhead. You can't say what. Was a big part Gary's, of the show. Yeah. And then that um, that woman bodybuilder. Oh, right. Yes. Oh, God. I forget her name. 
I love her in that. She's yeah. just like, what's that too? He's great. He's not too masculine. No, he's like, yeah, very, very feminine. feminine. I love that. He's, uh, he's great. great I, love, I love the one girl who's naked and she doesn't want to be out there. She's like, what's the donkey? He's yeah. like, the donkey has nothing to do with you. <laughs> and, and I was, I think I was more interested in those segments when I was yeah. younger. Yeah. Cause that last one with the donkey, I was like, this is so staged. Like this feels, yeah. it, it feels like you're trying to go for in the moment ad libbing. I'm like, yeah. this is all set up. This is all scripted. I was kind of out on those. Yeah, the, the last one was lame. You're yeah, right. Because Gary's yeah. just like, they're not going to do it. Shut no. it down. It's like, that was obviously. The others you know, are great. Yes. Yeah. Or the one with the cops where I'm like, well, these are just <laughs> actors. Like, these aren't cops. Like, <laughs> Right. Yeah. Washington, D.C. Do you have a permit? <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, Howard becomes a uh, program director at a little station he works at because he oh. sucks on air. <laughs> That's the other thing, too, is like Howard having to pretend he's so bad at radio. Yeah. Hi, this is Howard Stern, and it's 75 degrees presently, winds out of the northwest. Mm. He puts on that voice. Oh, oh, I'm terrible at radio. Watch out. Is this the guy who fires the other guy immediately? Oh, when yeah. Yeah, yeah this like, guy's like, you hey, came you, late today. You're hey, fired. Yeah, you came in late yesterday. You came in late today. You're, you're fucking fired. Get out. And then he goes, <laughs> and I fuck you in the asshole. I fuck you in the <laughs> asshole, and I make you big donkey asshole. And I'm like, who's this guy? And why did Stern not take him with him? This guy's hilarious. <laughs> he's way funnier. <laughs> <laughs> so at this time, when he gets the job first as the morning guy, and he doesn't work out because of the program director, yeah. there's an obsession with money. Yeah. He yeah. mentions it multiple times how much money he's being paid for these jobs. Yeah. Yes. Why? Like, we all know that, like, your first jobs are not high paying jobs. Like, yeah. we know you're a millionaire now. Yeah. Everyone understands why. We're not upset at you. Yeah, but I used to make $98 yeah. a week. And it's like, okay, cool. That's, whatever. Cool. That's exactly why. And it's like, and uh, even in my mind, I'm like, am I going to look up the conversion rate yeah. to find out if this was. And I said 97, you weren't going to do that. You're like, oh, I'll just take his word for it. It's good. I don't care. <laughs> right. But it, but it was it was mentioned at least three different times. I took this job and it paid me this amount yes. of money per week. Like, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's Radio like shouldn't do that on the show, too, when he would talk about previous jobs. You no, know, no, they of course. This much yes. a week. It's like, okay. It again, it again is just humble beginnings. This, yeah. The right. regular Driving man, that Howard Stern. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, but yeah, he does marry Allison, who he loves so much. He loves her. He'll, he'll love her forever. Who's right. Beth? Anyway, I do like where he has to make a choice. Like, do I play it safe or do I take a risk and try to be this like dish jockey and make oh, something else? Before you go there. Yeah. So let's talk about he goes to I think it's Detroit. He does. Yeah. He takes the morning. Oh, that's, job. That's, this uh, is, that's a little bit later. Is that later? That's okay. later. Yeah. Detroit's later. Yeah. Come on, Carl. Come on, Carl. Well, I'm, I'm thinking of the Duke of Rock. Is that Detroit? That's, that's Detroit. That's okay. Detroit. Yeah. That's All right. Detroit. Then we'll, then get, we'll get there when yeah. we get there. I'm sorry. I know you're in a rush to get to Detroit. You love Detroit. I want to get to Detroit, man. That's where all my boys are. Uh, all the Detroiters. Actually, Is this yeah. when the guy makes him the program director? Yeah. And then he's like, uh, yeah, you you program director now. You see yeah. I'm like, is this guy going to burn this place down for the insurance money? <laughs> like, I'm like, did he fire somebody? Well, that's, yeah, that's when he, he makes him fire someone. It was crazy. He's like throwing yeah. up. Uh, but yeah, last time I was in Detroit, uh, went to Astronomicon, met a lot of horror icons and wrestlers and this isn't about you tony no 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 <laughs> no no. it's about someone else you know who the best person i met in detroit was who's that cripple jesus i was gonna i, I, I was gonna guess oh, that i right. drove out okay. to his place and we did a bonus video on CJ. patreon because cripple jesus <laughs> is a little too spicy for youtube uh you think? I, I literally sat there. i'm like looking at all these like wrestling and horror icons i'm like guys i can't wait to see cripple jesus tonight he's so funny <laughs> when oh, we did yeah. our live show in chicago he got the biggest response of anyone <laughs> yeah <laughs> How I haven't heard from him in forever. Does anyone know where he is? is he, cool? he does a he does a podcast. Oh, he's still doing it. Yeah, yeah. he's doing the podcast. Oh, okay, I haven't heard him call into anything. Yeah, That's I what's know. Gotta, yeah, I forgot you have to bleep back. stuff on. Maybe I shouldn't talk about donkey assholes. So no, you can. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Just not in the first minute. Right. Um, until true. YouTube changes another rule. Oh, really? Oh, we're well into it. Now. <laughs> Get ready, guys. <laughs> Oh, I really like. Uh, this is where he goes to Hartford now. Okay, Hartford Cause, cause where he meets where he meets Fred. Which is something else I did. I didn't. I could have played it safe, and I'm like, ah, I don't know. I want to have a show. So, again, strangely relatable. But he goes to Hartford. He meets Fred Norris. Yes, yes. And Fred's great in this. <laughs> Fred, Fred, who is like not an actor, it's one of the best parts in this movie. I just love how checked out he is. And he's like, yeah, sure, whatever. Um, Fred is really great. And there are times on the radio where I kind of forget, of course, that Fred's there. Yeah. And then there was a time I don't, I don't know if it was when people were trying out for Jackie's job or something mm. like that, 
where Fred had a larger part in the show. Yeah, they tried and to I, incorporate him more. I totally love him. Like, yeah. and when, when China would come on and he would just do Fred Gwynn's voice. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing. That's, like, a good, he, that's a good call. He really, now he doesn't do anything. I haven't right. heard him say a word in a decade, but no. he was really great. And one I my, think he's fantastic. One of my favorite things movie. about him when I listened to the history of Howard Stern was he found out um, uh, David Bowie and blanket on his name. Mick Jagger. Mick Jagger. We're going to cover, like, um, what's that song, Dancing in the Streets? They did, yeah. 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 Uh, so apparently Fred Norris, he like recorded like what it might sound like, and it was like so close to what it ended. And apparently, like, oh, really? I remember, it's from the History Hour, so I'm, maybe I'm mixing up That's with a different great. song, but I okay. think it's that one. Yeah. And I think like, like the, the the people producing the album were like, how did they get a hold of it? Because it sounded <laughs> so close. That's funny. <laughs> it's not like the worst period in the Howard Stern show yeah. when he was part of the band The Losers. Oh, um, I. Yeah. Hated. I could not stand bringing in Corey Feldman Ugh. for his band to play. And, Doug Flutie uh, was it, on there with his band competing against the losers. Yeah. It was What's good. his <sighs> name? What's her name from? Um, I don't mind. I don't <laughs> name. Um, but yeah, Fred is awesome. Uh, I love uh, Howard screwing up the sponsor. I love Stanley Sport. My parents would take me through there and we just had a great time. There's only one Stanley Sports and the grand opening is this weekend. And it's really funny. Like, I love how that is a real shift change in the movie. Yeah. How Allison's like, that was the best part of your show, yeah. which may seem like an insult to someone who's been trying to make it on the radio. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, he really takes it. But she's that, right. And yes. I and I was, like I said, I was influenced by that. Like, hey, just be yourself. Yeah. Like, be able to, like, shit on yourself once how, in a while. Allison is responsible for the Howard story <laughs> right. that we love, guys. Can, yes. I, can I just point out, because Howard likes to take credit for a lot of things. Yes. As we know. And this movie is Howard taking credit for changing how radio is done. <laughs> I'm the first person who's real. Yeah. I go on there and I just talk about like real things. Like he, he wasn't the first guy who did that. No, no. no. it was like every other asshole. Hey, let's do it. It's a yeah. Morning drive time. <laughs> yeah. But Howard uh, likes to pretend that he invented this. Yes, yeah. yes. And we nope. get that later with them referring to Don Imus, but it's kind of just like, oh, he's an asshole. Let's forget about anything he's done. Don't worry about Don Imus. Just know he's a dick. Yeah. And we'll move on. Because he had there. that feud with Don Imus <laughs> right. for yes. like years. The of guy course. who played Imus is perfect, by oh, the way. The casting great. in this movie is The casting fantastic. is amazing. Uh, yes. It's really great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll get to Don Imus, who Howard Stern has kind of become now. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. In every single way possible. Yeah. So, every way possible. So he gets invited to a uh, premiere for some B movie with the character Britney Fairchild, <laughs> um, yeah. who isn't a real person. She's an amalgam of different people. Sure. Apparently, the bathtub incident was with uh, actress Jessica Hahn, yeah. and it happened after the movie takes place with Jackie instead of Fred. Right. Apparently, Jackie had to do like an apology on the radio to his wife about it or something, and then they just moved that into here for some reason. Uh, but I guess it's to show like create some oh, tension between him and yeah, like oh, he was he got a little bit of fame and he was tempted, but he he stuck true. But in real yeah. life, he probably cheated again. Uh, Fred playing this scene, amazing. Oh, Fred is amazing. The reveal of Fred at the other side I, of the tub is wonderful. <laughs> I remember great. like I remember like reading like a film theory thing where like it, the the second half of the movie counters it, but like there's like a thing where it's like is Fred real or is it just a coward's <laughs> imagination? Because normally like <laughs> That's funny. she never addresses him and yeah. she's it, until like how. Howard leaves, but like he's there in the, the bathtub, but she had Fred in there too. Yeah. <laughs> like it makes no sense. Well, the other thing that doesn't make sense, and this is why I wanted to talk about like what is real and what's not real. So apparently the way that he gets caught by his wife is because he leaves his wet underpants in his car. Mm. Yeah. Throw the underpants out the window. Why yeah. are what are you them? saving these underpants right. for? Like, uh, if he would have called out, like, I had no money for underpants or whatever. Right, no, no, I understand yeah. you're not getting paid millions of dollars, but you can buy underpants. <laughs> yeah, I'm dude. surprised. I'm surprised there wasn't a line of dialogue. He's like, now you might be thinking, why wouldn't I throw it away? But I only made $98. <laughs> like he's, he's literally driving back. He's all worried that he's going to yeah. get yeah. caught. And he's squeezing out his underwear in his car. Yeah. yeah. First off, that's not cool. And then I guess seemingly throws them on the floor of the passenger seat to like hide them. <laughs> right. Also, he, he covers up the cheating pretty bad. He's... No, yeah, if you're going to cheat on your wife, I'm not trying to give your, you know, No, give advice, give advice. I love no, please don't. Explain how to cheat yeah. on your wife, Doug. Please do not act hold like on, this. Don't come in and say, I really got to go to bed. Uh, it, was, it was really tough. I'm stressed out right now. <laughs> don't gotta, don't act go. stressed out. Yeah. What a horrible night. What a horrible night, yeah, everything. Was, was horrible. Uh, I don't even want to get near you to kiss you. Uh, <laughs> no. Yeah. And she's cleaning the oven at, like, what, 12 a.m.? <laughs> that was a weird scene. Good point, too. Yeah, you're right. 
Yeah, right. here's here's how you play it. How was the beer? Oh, it was actually a lot of fun. You know, it was I've never great. been there before, and uh, you know, Fred yeah. had a good time. Uh, I peed myself, so you might find uh, wet <laughs> yeah. underpants in the car. Well, that, but other also, than that, that is also a weird thing uh, when we get to that scene, because um, he is about to go to Detroit. He he, and right. he tells her like, "We're going to Detroit. It's going to be great." And she shows him the underwear, but it's like. How did she piece together that was cheating? Unless it was his performance, but it's just like yeah. if I found wet underwear, like soaking. That's not the underwear, first thing I would think of. Was like, no. were you in a bathtub with your yeah. underpants on? Right. I would be like, dude, did you like shit yourself and try to clean it? What did <laughs> yeah. you do? Like, right. also, I would. Have, I'm not asking any questions. I don't want to know the answer to that. I don't want to bring that up. I'm My just, spouse is probably very embarrassed about yeah. that. why they're I just, wet. I'm I wouldn't not, jump no. to cheating. Yeah. That would be the last thing I jumped to. Like, I'd be like, right. so what? That whole did that whole. Pee? Plot point is clunky, right? Yeah. We could all agree okay, that it's that a didn't little really clunky, happen. Yeah. It's clunky. Did it's he did clunky. he move to Detroit without Allison? Yes, she leaves that, him at that point. But no, yeah. but I mean like in real life. That I, I know in the remember. movie that's that what I don't remember. That seems odd. To I, yeah, well, no, because this, this is, maybe this there was another reason if she didn't move in with him because this story didn't happen yeah, in right, this time. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh but again, tension. But yeah, he goes to Detroit and it's supposed to be this hip station, and it's not. And uh the guy calls him Big Bird. Like Big Bird to me, and yep. apparently that was a dude from a band <laughs> called him that, and I can't, I'm blanking on the band. Oh, uh, but yeah, the ones the singer from the band was just like, man, that guy looks like Big Bird. <laughs> so this is what I want to talk about. So yes. the, the Duke of Rock, yes, is the overnight DJ. Yes, Howard gets on for his 6 a.m. shift, and he's finishing his shift. Mm. And not only does he big time Howard, this guy who works from midnight until six, <laughs> yeah. big times Howard. Like, oh, who's this asshole? Bob, I'm the best, you know. Yeah. But there's and another scene right after that, a billboard of the Duke of Rock that's out on the yeah. street behind Howard. He's making a phone call. Yeah. Who's advertising their overnight DJ? <laughs> Nobody's cool. advertising. Tonight at midnight, check out the Duke of Rock. <laughs> that that was amazing. I, I looked at that. like I never pieced this together Me earlier neither. watching yeah. look, look, it. the first like, time. Why is there a billboard for this dude? <laughs> and I expected like the truck to go by and then suddenly it's Howard's face and this guy's yeah. really pissed. I thought that was the reason. But no, it's no. like a weird... Like, just personal vendetta he is against some overnight DJ in Detroit. But this is one of the best scenes with the traffic copter with Mama Look a Boo Boo Day. (laughs) And I love the poem, Kill, Kill, Kill. (laughs) The white man. (laughs) Kill him. stolen from SNL, right? Didn't Eddie Murphy do that? Maybe. Kill the white man? It was something very similar Similar, to that. Yeah. Uh, I just love, kill him until he's dead. I just love (laughs) the face he makes to the girl when he's like... (laughs) (laughs) yeah Yeah. it's good it's super fun uh i can't believe it takes him so long in these places to be fired or quit like that's (laughs) the thing that i could not understand from any of this i'm like how tough was it in the early 80s to find a dj i can't imagine it's that difficult no it it can't be well their budget was 98 dollars a week (laughs) probably don't want people signing up for that gig i don't know um but i do like so allison does come back and i do love so she works with like people with special needs which i don't remember if that was real or not i think so uh i just love the frisbee scene i I wrote that down my favorite scene in the movie is throwing a frisbee at a face (laughs) over and over again it's the only thing i remember from seeing the trailer yes and i was like i gotta go watch this movie now that's amazing also it's Really, the R word, Jessica, oh, censor that. Boy, you're not invited back. I'm not allowed to say the R word on YouTube. No, you're not invited back. Right. Again, we have to switch seats. A guy with severe autism. Okay, good. I'll He's trying to play frisbee. That in. I'll check that in. Trying to play frisbee and <laughs> smash. But the you're right. Off it's face. so funny. It's like it's like that rule of threes. He does it once. Yeah. Doesn't react. Yep. Does it again? But then I love the program director runs, and you're not ready for it. It just hits him in the face. Okay. So that brings me to another thing I wanted to talk about. Yeah. Why does the program director have to find him in the park <laughs> to tell him they're changing music formats? I almost expected him to go, I'm at a picnic with my family yeah, right over there. See you. Yeah, I was like, can this be a different scene at the stage? I, I was going to wait. And, I mean, I guess it's more exciting than a phone call visually. <laughs> No, I, yeah. I, I get that. It's just so ridiculous. He's like, I've been looking all over for you. Yeah, We're going to play country now. Like, oh, he's I running have, around yeah. Detroit. I have been no around Detroit all the time. You. I've been wandering the streets for hours trying to find you. That, that in was Detroit in the 80s. It's safe to <laughs> run around and wander. Uh, but yeah, that is, now that I'm thinking about yeah. it, I'm like, hey, that is a weird scene. I, I love that. But yeah, Sorry. they cut to country rock. 
That because they decided Detroit it's had too many rocks. It's not even country rock, rock yeah, man. This is no, no. Old this is whole hardcore country. country. Yeah. And again, strangely relatable. I always wanted to work on TV. In TV, that's why I'm not working. And I screw that lineup. I always wanted to work in TV. And the one TV show I worked on was a prank show. It was on the country music television network. Oh. And for like two years, I had to listen to like so much country shit. And I do not like country music. So I, I really related to Howard here where he's got the cowboy hat on. He's like, <sighs> yeah. yeah, can't do it. We had to go to like country music festivals and Oof. stuff. And it's like, guys, right. I, I got to tell you, yeah. I love this scene so yeah. much. I had a job a few years ago. I quit by saying I quit. I think I quit. Oh, I love it. I love that. I knew I was going to do it that I way. I just, I love the way he nice. delivers those lines. So this is your old pal Hop Along Howie saying I quit. I, I think I quit. Ugh, I Isn't it. it weird? So you're, you're watching Stern on all these different radio stations. There's not a single person who likes him or what he's doing. No, he no. keeps getting these jobs. He yeah, I don't know why he keeps getting those jobs. And ev everyone in the management, everyone hates him. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's yeah, like, all... him against the world at all times. <laughs> oh wait, there's one person who likes him, Fred. No, 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 no. There's one. Uh, what was it called? Is it in this section where there's one person who likes him and it's a woman who calls to do the weather? And oh. she's like a dominatrix uh, yes. oh, right, right, right. yeah. She's like, I did have one fan. That's Washington, yeah. It's gonna be cold. Yeah, yeah. I like that. It's super fun. <laughs> so yeah, now he goes to Washington, D.C. And uh, he meets Robin Quivers. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I guess it was weird at the time to interact with your news person. I yeah. guess that it, was like a taboo. It must have been. Like the yeah. amount of times they're like, you don't talk to the news person. Yeah. It's like, wow, I... I guess that's the way it was. I guess. I mean, yeah. now any radio station, don't care who the DJ is, like, it's another part of that morning well, this, show team. By the way, this type of show that Howard does, is that even on regular radio anymore? Like, there's there's no... I, I wouldn't know. No, <laughs> I, don't I, mean, I think you here we have, like, Preston and Steve and stuff, but that's not quite the but same. But that's, like, the closest that's to the it close, that a they lot, play there music. Used be, there used to be so many of them, and you've reviewed a lot of them. Yes. Yeah. Uh, there used to Correct. be so many of them. I don't think these shows are on terrestrial radio anymore. I think no. they all turned to podcasting and shit. I was actually having a really interesting conversation with Eric Nagel last yeah. night. He's a big radio buff. Yeah. He used to produce the Opie and Anthony show and he still works in radio and stuff. And what radio has done, it's so crazy, mm. is they've gotten a away from personality driven radio. Yeah. And they focus on music, yeah. which is the opposite of what they should be doing. Yeah. Oh. Because it's it's the personality 100%. you want. It. Yeah. It's like I will listen to this because that's my friend on the on the radio yeah. show. Yeah. I can listen to sticks and yeah. anything. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It is weird. Like radio should be giving them something. To there should be to, more personalities and yeah. less music because music is so everywhere much now. Music you just get on demand yeah. right now. Like especially now, everyone. I mean, that's one of the reasons I got rid of satellite. It's like I don't really need. I don't trust a program director to figure out what I want to listen. No, to. no, 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 no. no <laughs> Honestly, the no. only time I listen to regular radio is like if I'm too lazy to find a CD or pull up my phone. I'm just like, but I, I have I, never. Did you just say find a CD? Yep, find a CD. Uh, yeah. Occasionally, I, have yeah. a CD. I still <laughs> I listen to the radio, yeah. and I can't find a CD. <laughs> Robin Quivers. Um, yeah. Uh, I guess the news person, very, very crazy to talk to. I love yeah. that he's like talking to her about the last time she got laid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I haven't got laid in a year. And Howard's like, what? That's insane. <laughs> I'm on six months, but we'll see. We'll see. I don't want to. I want to <laughs> yeah. beat. I don't want to beat. Rob, I wanna, You're really going to go for that record. Uh, once I get a year, I'm going, hey, Robin, I went. <laughs> just as I did really like Robin. Uh, oh, so Back in the old yeah. show. But whenever you, I have this note for later, but I'll say it yeah. now. Whenever you play clips of modern Howard Stern, she just seems like she she's wants, terrible. She's, no, she's just like, yeah, it's great. Checked Howard out. Yeah. checked out completely. Yeah, I wrote a note down on this. I think Robin's a better actor than she is a radio personality. What? I thought she was good in this movie. Now. Yeah, I thought she was. Really I liked good. her in this yeah. movie, and then I listened to her on the show. And I'm like, oh, Robin. If oh. Howard Stern didn't ban his staff from doing other things, <laughs> she could have had a, an award by now. <laughs> yeah, right. My favorite is uh, they used to make fun of her all the time because she was supposed to have her own like talk show or something. Yes, remember that? Oh, and it was like oh, Robin God. coming fall and like. They would make fun of her. She's like, well, I never <laughs> said which fall. Or <laughs> I completely forgot about yeah. that. No. What the hell was that show? They be? tried something on Sirius. She had like a, a side show that she was doing oh, on really? Sirius. Yeah, it, it was like The View or The Talk or uh, one of these Yenta oof. shows. Yeah, yeah. It's, 
The Howard Stern audience is not going to listen to that. No. So I don't know what they thought was going to happen. But I mean, no. there are female listeners, but do they want to listen to a Robin? Ask show your about- mom. Yeah, I will Let's ask. Find her. out. <laughs> when she's when someone else is putting together her news segments for her, I don't yeah. think she's writing questions yeah. right. to talk to celebrities about. So. She's just there because she's Robin at right. this point. It's right. shocking how lazy lazy she is. Yeah, she's literally shocking. his Robin, to, the Robin she, to his Batman. But she used to be so great. Like I would go. Yeah, to it's school. not true. No, no, no. I mean, no. <laughs> I enjoyed her segment because I would go to school, so I never heard the news unless I was home sick and stuff like right, that. Right, yeah. And I was like, man, when they would riff on the news, the news segment was she the would best. try and keep it together. Yeah. And they had that, oh, God, those Robin News songs at the beginning. Oh, those yeah. were amazing. I, I love those things. Well, don't, let's not forget, it's time for Robin's <laughs> News. Yes. It's time for Robin's <laughs> News. God, I want to like like look up old Howard Stern clips now. Yeah, I know. Like it was this. fun. It was a good show. Uh, yeah, hard to listen to him now. Um, so yeah, uh, getting chewed out by the execs at his job for being too edgy. All right, so relatable. This, is, a, this Rel- is another thing. Relatable. I, you could get into the parallels with your life, but this is another <laughs> thing that I, I wrote down here, where every time. Howard gets into a fight with the executives or the management. Yeah. That's when the ratings book comes out. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. like, oh. Oh. Like, hey, yeah. another thing stirred. Wait, wait, he's got a 6'2. What? <laughs> oh, uh, stop everything. <laughs> <laughs> this is what the fire this guy. 6'2. Um, this is a little too convenient. It has to be. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I get know it. How you do it otherwise. I get it. You're right. You're right. Yeah, at one point. Howard, uh, Howard makes fun of his wife's eggs, and you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't make fun of women's eggs. Howard makes a girl orgasm on air and gets in a lot of trouble. <laughs> yep. Now, was this, did you look into this? Was this real? Like, did uh, this little I think he might have done happen? similar stuff. I, I think know. it did happen, yeah. It okay. did happen. Real thing. Did it happen but, this early on? Because I'm like, this is really edgy to go it feels in like there, it might have been something and you're later. pretty early on to try this stuff. Did it really happen at all? Because this is something you can easily fake. That's one well, of no, the no, things. No, of but yeah. Sure. <laughs> um, but, but I guess in this movie, we're supposed to assume that it was real and it did happen. Yeah. Well, it's interesting because when they play clips of the Howard Stern show, mm. and are we in Detroit still here? We're in Washington. No, we're in Washington. We're in Washington. Because they, quit, they even Washington. put, they already put Robin in that booth at right. this point to get her away from him. Oh, right. To, to like to separate them. Right. And still talk to them. <laughs> but if you go back and listen to those shows, it was really hard to listen to. Oh, yeah. And they make it yep. seem like he was so good. Yeah. But if you go back and listen to the old Howard Stern they're always cla- oh, yeah. what did you say? Oh, they're yeah. always clapping. It's at each very other. morning zoo ish. It's, bad. it's mm. pretty rough it's at bad. this point. <laughs> I do like <laughs> the one side tangent he goes on where he talks about how he was in Vietnam and he yeah. blew up a school full of kids and he's like, "That's one kill." No, it's a kill. That's amazing. <laughs> she's like, what, she's yeah. like, "I was a captain." He goes, "Well, I was. What were you again? <laughs> just, yeah. well, a, captain a captain in what? He's like the hundred and first, the hundred and first one. I don't know the hundred and first. You know." It's she's really, like I, really great again something you probably can't you can't joke about blowing up a school oh he's, he's done today. that bit for decades oh, that's yeah, an yeah. ongoing yeah. bit that he does talking about his and, and time also, in vietnam like, i love the fact that they really built up this rapport with the two of them and, yeah and i hate the fact that if you've listened to him within the past i'm gonna say 20 years yeah that doesn't exist anymore correct she's yeah. checked out completely yeah. he's talking to ronnie constantly I, man, I well, they should have retired. I know we're skipping ahead, but they he right. said so many times he doesn't want to be the guy who stays at the party too long. He used to make fun of Don Imus, and, I miss. and like nope. it's just nope. it sucks That's knowing it. now where I'm like, oh, you're you're you said you weren't going to do this, and you don't have to do this, right? Yeah. You have more money than God. Why are you now? We sound like stuttering, John. Huh? Now we sound like Sutter John. <laughs> do you need more money, Howard? Is that what you is that what you need? What are you gonna do with? But I mean, I can understand if he wanted to do it. It's like, well, then do it well. What are you doing? Like, it he just, thinks he's doing. He thinks he's doing a good show. Like, you don't he's, need he's to. You don't need to do yeah. a show to hang out with your friends like Robin. Is like, you just yeah. hang out with them at this point? No, no one will it's the fear that. of becoming irrelevant. Yes. Like I, he I likes totally his celebrity friends. Yeah. He, yeah, he goes on vacation right. with celebrities. He hangs out with them. Yes. Then just do that. But he needs to be on no. a show to do that. The Otherwise, s- there's yeah. no. The scariest thing for him would be if somebody says, "Oh, I remember Howard Stern. Yep. He never yep. wants that." Oh, like, what happened to that guy? Yeah, right. Exactly. So why doesn't he branch out? Wasn't the whole point of going on America's Got Talent to like branch out so he can move away from radio? Why did he stop that? I know he should have gotten a Netflix deal. He should have done yep. the thing like Letterman did, where it's like, yeah, do eight episodes a season interviewing people. people. Watch that shit. Yeah, we'll totally watch that. Like, Jerry yeah. Seinfeld films himself yeah. driving in a car with people, and that's like it. It's good like, show. The, yeah, people just, like, like that. just do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, sorry, we're skipping ahead to like modern Stern. Let's talk about when he was good. <laughs> <laughs> 
So yeah, he becomes a hit and he gets his old friend Fred on the show. Yes. Yep. Again, relatable. This show took off and I was like, hey, Johanna and like a bunch of other friends. Like we've known each other since high school. Want to be yeah. on my show? And it, he's like, whatever. It really is another line where Allison's like, Howard, you know what a great person you are. And <laughs> you always bring your friends along with you. You're so noble. And yeah. like, All right. Okay. You're laying this on it. a little thing. Yeah, we, he we only it. brought Fred. Like, that was it. <laughs> yeah. It's not like his old high school buddy yeah. or a guy from college now works for the radio in the booth. No, it's just. But Fred. there is a good gag in there where he's trying to sell Fred to the yes. station. He's yeah. like, "These guys are dynamic personality. You can't, you can't believe this guy's so good." Yeah. <laughs> Fred's just like, yeah. "It is wonderful." I do. I mean, yeah. forgot to mention when he left Detroit, he's just like, or uh, was it Detroit? No, no, uh, Hartford, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, but he's just like, "I won't forget you." And Fred's like, "Okay, I'm gonna get these guys to hire you. All right." But it is funny because they never really establish a rapport other than yeah. Fred hands him his symbols. Yep. And he's like, oh, thanks, man. That was really great. Cut to. He's doing sound I, effects. Yes, and stuff. I'm indebted to you for the rest of my life. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Might have missed a couple scenes there or something. But I remember when this show took off. I was like, Johanna, I'm putting you on an episode. She's like, huh? I'm like, yeah, we're doing an episode. She's like, okay. I'm like, oh, we're also starting a Godzilla podcast. She's like, fine. That sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so this is the one thing that's a little dated now. Uh, we get a whole scene dedicated to lesbians and how awesome lesbians are. And it's like, yeah, I get that this is a big deal back then, but it's now it's like I have endless videos of more than just two women I can pull up right now. You're complaining about <laughs> I'm the not scene complaining. with 30 naked chicks who are all hot. <laughs> that's what you're complaining about? I'm okay. Not I thought it was all right. No, no, I'm not complaining about it. It's just, it's so funny because the movie yeah. knew like, this is amazing. Right. Like in a mainstream movie, no one's ever seen this now. It's just like, yeah, yeah it's okay. Well, I should give Howard credit for mm -hmm. saying like, I figured out the formula to great entertainment, lesbians. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's it. I mean, and that is literally what is said in this movie. Yeah. Everyone and, likes them. I don't know now, like I understand them. what you're saying, but even now I was thinking, oh yeah, that was so <laughs> yeah. new and different. It like, was. Yeah. It was. He literally has a chapter on just lesbians. Sure. And the course. chapter ends in all caps, like, lesbians, lesbians, yeah. I love lesbians. Yeah, the yeah. fact that this movie ends with the line, like, hot lesbo action, I was like, not, <laughs> right. even, not even a three-way, different movie. Uh, it just, he right. just wants hot lesbo action. He doesn't even want a three-way. Right. Uh, by the way, this is, Robin has the best moment here. Mm -hmm. When uh, Allison calls and says she's pregnant. Yeah. And they're, they're all celebrating. Robin goes, well, wait, what is it? Is it a lesbian? Yeah, that's a good line. <laughs> like, yes. Can we talk privately now? Absolutely, wait a sweetheart. Minute, wait a minute. Does she know what she's going to have? Is it going to be a lesbian? Oh, please. Robin. Robin. Robin definitely did not come up with that because it was a pretty no, good line. No, she didn't come up with it, but it's a, it's a really good line yeah. to deliver. <laughs> Again, she's a great actress. Yes. She should have acted. Why doesn't he let people do other stuff? That's kind of fucked. I think Robin gets a car. She can do whatever she wants. She's yeah. Just, she just doesn't just... want to do anything but raise horses or whatever that yeah. was. Well, I guess she's doing it then. Yeah. But yeah, I guess less work. Why not? Howard Stern, um, can I just not do anything? It's like, <laughs> all right, I don't know. Every now and then laugh. Her only hobby is cancer. <laughs> right. It's the only thing she does on the side. <laughs> Didn't she beat cancer? Or? She did. That's what yeah. she does for fun. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Carl. <laughs> Carl's never coming back on. I'm nope. so sorry. Nope. <laughs> this is a good cut to my movie where I'm getting banned from Hack the Movies. <laughs> I was too outrageous. <laughs> I was too outrageous for Tony It's a whole chapter in your book. It's crazy. <laughs> The guy who looks kind of like me. Yeah. Get out, Carl. Yep. The chapter ends with, and Doug was there too. <laughs> well, no, no, you got to do what the movie did, replace Jackie Martin with someone else. Right, so right, exactly. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of and Croge was there. And then <laughs> yes. Doug's, in, Doug's in the theater going, what the fuck, Carl? What happened? It was me. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't remember. Anyway. No, I, I've literally insulted almost everyone who works in this place. Like, Multiple times. I don't even know why I was invited. <laughs> so it's fine. It's fine. If I, if I could never come back again. I showed you up and I was like, this is a legit place. To be fair, you I don't know so everyone in this place. You didn't insult all of them. Not yet. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. I really thought I was going to show up to Tony's garage. I really, I <laughs> yeah, did not know place. it was a studio. I didn't know what was going on here. Oh. <laughs> this is impressive. Listen, listen. You never know what's going to happen in the future. I might have I too much fun on Twitter one day and this might all be in my garage. I assume this was a corner of your basement. I, I'm not it almost lying. was. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, at home, I have like, a, I mean, it's a totally real store. It's not a set. 
But uh, at my, I have a home office, and it's made to look like a corner of the store. So when I'm streaming, it looks like I'm still there. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, sorry, I broke the fourth wall. I really yeah. You wow. didn't just take a picture and put up a green screen at home. You were like, well, I got no. I put actual this. work into okay. it. Why? Did someone else just throw green screen? <laughs> yeah, I guess I you can just do that. Oh, okay. if it ever falls down, you're in trouble. Should I put but... some skateboards with Boba Fett up on my wall? <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! I didn't know that I was going to be insulted. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway. Um, so Allison loses. Can I just the, mention yeah. though, since you brought that up, I never expected my basement to be a studio set. So <laughs> right, right, when no. people make fun of like the decor and shit, I'm like, well, that's it. this is like yeah. what my house was before yeah. I started podcasting. Yeah. Right? No, I, before I podcast, <laughs> I take a Barbie dream house and I move it into the corner <laughs> yeah. of the room. Like, Smart. That's yeah, what yeah. I'm doing. <laughs> Well, I'm loving it. I'm living low now, so like my house just my, my apartment looks ridiculous. <laughs> so I'm like, ah, fuck it. I'm not expecting visitors for a oh, while. God, I can't even imagine. <laughs> <laughs> it looks better than you think, but it's still ridiculous. You might get to that 12 months. You might get to that <laughs> streak, to, buddy. People have been telling me that yeah. I'm probably gonna get. You I'm might like, be able to pull that off. I'm like, ah, whatever. I can, I can deal. I can need a break. <laughs> anyway. Uh, now that we've laughed a lot, yes. Allison has a miscarriage. So yes. Howard jokes about this on the air. Yeah. Uh, well, he jokes about it with her to cheer her up. Right. And again, this is something not in, and in this, his mind. Not, he's like, this is comedy. Go yeah, and I'm reading this. <laughs> now, I've never had this same situation, but I definitely did a thing where like I used humor to like calm people of down. Course. And then I'm like, well, that worked. And then I tried it again and yeah. did yep. not have the same effect. So oh. he's trying to, he's making a joke. Like, look, I, I took a picture We'll show your parents. We'll take it around. And this is making her laugh. It's morbid, but it's funny. But then he does it on the air. Yes. And it's like, ooh, I wouldn't have, uh, ooh, I wouldn't have done that. But it's part of his thing where he's like, I have to be more real. Mm -hmm. I have to be like myself and talk about myself. He just, he didn't know like when to reel that in. And I guess right. that affected the real life Alice. And I guess got tired of it. Yes. Which I wouldn't blame her. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised he's like. This was your idea. You said this was the best part <laughs> of the show. <laughs> yeah. Oh God! It's true. You oh, knocked wow. down my Good vinyl point. from of Dragon Sound from Miami Connection. I was, I was gonna get green screens because that's not anything. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna try and steal this when I left too. So. Oh, you did. A fan gave me that. <laughs> so yeah, Allison isn't happy about that. Uh, but good news. Howard goes to WNBC. WNBC. <laughs> Can you do it? Can you do it? WNBC. WNBC. Why don't you? WNBC. 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 I think I'll do it for everything. No, 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 like me. Like me. I gotta do it. Hey. That's, how long did it take you to. Did you pick uh, WATP just to do that? Or nope. was that like a coincidence? Are you kidding me? Nope. Who are these podcasts? Was the name that I came up with. And then I think it was the first episode. I'm like, we should do this by do WNTP. <laughs> but it was it's totally a rip off of WNTP. Yeah, no, no, but it no, works no, so yeah. well. I, no. Okay, the prank. Someone uh, paid John Stutter and John yes. to oh, say so WATP on Cameo. He did it, yeah. <laughs> Twice in a row. I always love to hear it. It's on my soundboard. <laughs> and by the way, I love, I love Stutter and John's uh, show. He's great. And I uh, accept every lawsuit that he does. And I hope those people <laughs> I pay. accept every accept lawsuit. Every lawsuit. <laughs> Keep them coming, buddy. No, no, not <laughs> to me. Not to me. But like when he sues other people, I'm always in his corner. So, <laughs> yeah. so ignore this episode. Uh, yeah, when I covered Carl, that you're a his, troll and you're I, bad. When I cover that portion of his book, I I purposely destroyed my audio so I wouldn't get to see it. <laughs> that wasn't a mistake on my end as being a terrible podcaster. That was all intentional. Sure, sure. <laughs> so I, I, whenever I watch this, I realize, I'm like, oh my God, it takes an hour and 10 minutes for Paul Giamatti to show I up. I know. I was surprised by that yeah. too. Because he's and like the best part of the movie. He is amazing. He steals. Like, whenever you think someone else is coming in to steal the movie, at this point, oh. it is the Paul Giamatti And this movie. is like his yes. breakthrough. You know he was like on set going, come on, Giamatti. Yeah. You just... <laughs> gotta get in there man You're right cause just upstage howard stern and he was a guy scene, buddy he was a guy who was <laughs> always amazing. around yeah mostly doing like indie stuff but he would mm -hmm. appear in big stuff he would appear in awful fmv video games too um but yeah he was doing stuff but this was like his big moment this yeah. is huge i do map. have a question though yeah. is his character southern because at times yeah. that accent comes yeah. in and immediately yeah. drops out <laughs> I, yeah, think, I think he's supposed to be. Southern. I don't know what he's doing. Yeah, half it the could time. be a thing where like he's southern, but he uh he he's trying not to sound like it to fit yeah. in New York. He's but... really concentrating on sucking his upper lip yeah. in the whole time, so that's might be why the accent drops in um, and out. So yeah, I have a fact here from IMDb. 
Uh, the character Kenny Pig Vomit Russian is based on Kevin Metheny, the WNBC uh, radio program director at the time. In real life, Howard called him Pig Virus. Right. Yes. Not Pig Vomit. Yep. Uh, Pig Vomit was the name of the group that did Howard's opening theme. So I guess that's why they call him Pig Vomit. Sounds funnier. Uh, that's it weird. Why wouldn't he just go with Pig Virus? Did he forget? Did Howard forget what he used to call him? Maybe. I don't know. You know what I mean? It's um, kind of weird that he would. But no, uh, with the character of Kenny, he is one of my favorite like film oh, bad yeah, guys wonderful. of all time. And I was telling you, so they, uh, when, uh, I don't know if you ever saw the second Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movie. It's terrible. Uh, but he's in the movie. Um, oh my, well, I just said his name a million times. Andrew Garfield. No, 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 no. Paul Giamatti. Paul Giamatti. Okay. Uh, and I was just like, all I wanted was a scene of him dressed as a rhino, just cursing Spider-Man out. Like, I just wanted to play the character exactly. You're through here, Spider-Man. You'll never work in this town again. You goddamn web slinging motherfucker. You fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Instead, he did like a wacky Russian accent and he's a transformer at the end. I'm like, ah, oh, you fucking ruined it. And they filmed it in Rochester. Why'd you guys nope. do that? What the fuck's wrong with you guys? I know. It was Don't... a big deal for us, too. Ooh, they Spider filmed Man the too. Spider-Man movie yeah. in Rochester. The, the, girl, <laughs> the girl I was dating at the time, she she didn't see it in theater. She's like, it was so cool. They were filming it there. I'm like, oh, yeah. Do you want to watch the movie? And then we watched the movie. And she's like, this is bad. I'm like, yeah. yeah. You should be proud of that. Never seen it. <laughs> I don't know why that, like, hey, guys, the yeah. second reboot of Spider-Man is here. Like, cool. Awesome. Anyway. Uh, this role almost went to Philip Seymour Hoffman. That's and I, interesting. I wow. think that would have worked. But this, I think it worked out better. Philip Seymour Hoffman from Rochester. Oh, wow. Born in Rochester, New York. Guys, just to let you know, Philip Seymour Hoffman also died. Oh, I don't God. Know I'm, this. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to bring that up. Have you ever seen the movie? Paul Giamatti's still alive. He was so healthy, though. I mean, I think. He was such a healthy At life. the time of this recording, Paul Giamatti is oh, yeah. still alive. <laughs> you might want to say that. I don't know when this is coming out. <laughs> you got to be careful. Like, I once talked about the wrestler New Jack in an episode, and literally, like the day we filmed oh. it, after we got done recording, I pull it up, and it's like New Jack said. I'm like, shit. <laughs> uh, there's been a couple times that. Well, happened. chances are, if you're talking about a professional wrestler, yeah, you were, it was just, it was just weird right. that I hadn't talked about him in forever. You I were like, about I think one. Paul Walker's going to be just fine, everyone. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> so uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman would have been great in yeah. this role as well. Yeah. But he was already pretty big at that point, right? He was getting there. He yeah, he'd already been, had well, some big I, roles. It wasn't until like the early yeah. 2000s, because then Paul Giamatti started doing like bit parts in other yeah. movies, like the, the Planet of the Apes, Tim Dirt one. We have an action figure of the Michael Clark Duncan Planet of the Apes there. But this was a, um, a pretty big breakout. Because when was This American is a big Splendor? breakout, but it what wasn't was that, until- 99, 2000? Huh? What was it? American Splendor? When we played Harvey P. That Card. was a good one, but that was still kind of like an indie film. It wasn't until like well, yeah. Sideways where he like blew up. Oh, yeah, it yeah. Was, no. He didn't get like an Oscar. He was nominated yeah. or something. That's when he blew up. Yeah, and yeah. he got huge. Um, no, the guy from Wings was nominated for an Oscar for that movie. To oh, who's which, also a Spider-Man villain. He's which the is man. crazy that he was nominated. <laughs> oh, the one NBC uh, exec, what's his name, Vince or something? It's Poppy from Seinfeld. Oh, my God. I, I have to that. point out anytime there's yeah. like a Seinfeld yeah. character or, or something. Sly's... Partner from Cobra, something he's oh. really not Cobra, thought of. Have but yeah, he's in Cobra too. The Cobra? Oh no, Cobra's right there. I didn't um, take that yet. <laughs> yeah, I gotta be careful. He didn't know the tapes were like real, and he's starting to look around. I'm like, excited, all right, about, excited it. about all this. <laughs> um, so yeah, Howard meets Don Imus. Yeah, kind us know? of. <laughs> for our for our audience who has no idea who any of these people are, uh, can yeah. you tell me who Don Imus is? Dan Imus was the number one morning radio host mm -hmm. in uh, New York mm -hmm. at the time when Howard got to New York. Yeah. He's uh, a very conservative guy. Well, he's dead now, isn't he? He's dead now. Okay. Was, Wait, was. is he dead now? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Too. Jessica, leave a note. He's dead. Jessica, leave a note in the episode. Is right. he dead? Makes sense that he would be. But anyway, Je yeah. Jessica's like, I've never heard of any of these people. Well, so <laughs> Howard Stern and Don Imus were on the same station. One yep. was afternoons, one was mornings. When Howard went to mornings on K Rock, they were competing with each yeah. other, and Howard had a field day. Oh yeah, yeah. He really went after Imus hard. Yes, they were arch nemesis. He was, even years after he had beaten him and oh, stuff, yeah. he, he didn't like, let up. Oh yeah, did not let up. I think he was happy when Don Imus got a, a guy in trouble for. <laughs> yep. Yes. Yeah. Can you say that on the show? It, well, no, that'll be censored. But <laughs> I didn't. You can't say no. You should, we really got to censor that. Yeah. But I'm talking about how someone said no. It doesn't count for YouTube. You have to do it in the voice of Don. You don't understand. You don't understand. These aren't rules that I'm implementing. This is like YouTube is so fickle. But yeah. 
I've never used YouTube, so how would I possibly know <laughs> what these I rules are? I listen to your are. show as a podcast, and there are so many visual jokes where I'm like, I guess they're playing with toys. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> oh right no, now. I apologize at the end of the Phantom Menace episode. I'm like, I'm like, thank you for listening. I'm like, sorry for this episode. There this is when you really got to watch. You had Patrick Stewart wheeling in. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. I can't see anything. I hear crashing. You do get distracted by your set quite a bit. Well, We've already done it multiple times. I know. I'm, I'm watching it. Happen. It's tough not to get distracted. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway. All right. So Don Imus, he hates him. Uh, and yeah, Don Imus, he got like fired for that, right? For that. Uh, he was talking know, about the WM, WNBA. He was off the air for a while. It was yeah. college. Yeah, it was basketball. Yeah, he's talking about college women's basketball. It's yeah. like the most racist thing you could probably say there. Yeah. It's like Rutgers uh, or something. Yeah, and yeah. it was just like, Don, what are you doing? Yeah. He's but trying yeah. to be edgy. From the mm. moment that he and Stern, from the moment their paths collided, he backslid into obscurity. Yeah. Don Imus was just kind of yesterday's news after that. And yet and then he used to make fun of him all the time. Crankier, older, melting gentleman after that. Yeah. And... And then I guess he died. Maybe. Yeah, I guess he died. Yeah, he died. Um, oh, yeah. So Jackie the Joke Man just randomly shows up in the movie. <laughs> yes. Jackie Myers. You guys big Jackie the Joke Man fans? I like Jackie. I yeah. was, yeah. I actually, I liked Jackie um, on the show. I, I liked Artie better when Artie took over for sure, Jackie. Yeah. I thought the show yeah. got better. But I like what Jackie's become now. He's the only guy who's not like a bitter asshole about his no, experience with Howard Stern. No, you play anything with him on the thing, he's yeah. always so nice. He's, he's like, just happy yeah. with his life. Yeah. He's fine yeah, with that. He's, he's fine. He's, he's come to like, terms. I'm assuming he's su still successful or anything. He didn't like... He, he does he's not successful, up. but he made his money. Yeah. yeah. I'm sure he invested wisely. Yeah, probably, no, yeah. probably not. And he never burned... <laughs> well, I'm just saying... <laughs> yeah. he, listen, he's not in an apartment with a green screen. So <laughs> he, he never... He must not have said any... Horrible things about people either. Like her Stern gave him that joke like, hunt show. Correct. Yeah. Until I think he was tired of doing it. I like. Yeah. I don't know. I don't. He doesn't seem like he's the kind of guy who would want to start like a fight. He just seems like a nice guy. Right. Well, um, I mean, when it was contract negotiation time on that show, that's when you'd see a different side of Jackie. Oh. Okay. He was always the last to sign, the last to agree, the one yeah. who wanted to hold out. Blah blah blah. There were fights on the show. I don't know how real they were. Yeah. But maybe Even the maybe Benji back fights, then. I feel like that too. But like now, out of all the stern people you cover yeah. on your show, and I highly yeah. recommend when he covers stern people, it's it's yeah. always fun. It's always yeah. fun, but then like sad afterwards. But yeah, no, he's the only one who's like, oh okay, yeah. Yeah, he's not like going around a, talking shit about it. Yeah, like he, everyone he else wants to do. Funny joke I got. Like right. he's focused exactly. on himself, but it's like other other extern people should learn that too. Correct. Uh, you know who else never complains about anything? Beetlejuice. He never complains about it. <laughs> <laughs> I've worked with Beetlejuice. I don't, think, Beetlejuice. I don't Beetlejuice think Beetlejuice fun. knows he was ever on the Howard Stern show. I, just, I, I really. <laughs> after meeting Beetlejuice in person, you met I'm, him in person. Yeah, oh. I uh, like we filmed something with him. But after like meeting him, I'm realizing I'm like, oh, he just has a string of people that kind of like manipulate him and stuff. Yeah. It, that's what it seems like. Like he sure. clearly doesn't know what's going on. He has no like, idea. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah no. And I'm like, all right, I feel kind of bad now. Now well, that I see it, I feel kind of bad. I was talking to Shuli about it because mm -hmm. he we used to go on the road with him yeah. to gigs and stuff. And Shuli was like roomies with him yeah. oh. in hotel rooms. This guy's like shitting his pants and stuff. You know, he's yeah. like constantly just doing ridiculous things. I can't imagine being his handler. Yeah. 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 Uh, Fun guy was, though. Huh? Fun guy, though, he was a fun guy. Yeah. He was very funny. Um, I filmed a boxing match with him. Anyway, <laughs> um, cool. So yeah, uh, Jackie's there. Uh, they're talking about like things you can say and you can't say. This is really great because it is the scene before where he's pulled yeah. into the office and the lawyers go through the list of words that you cannot, cannot say, say on the air. Yeah. And they work them all into this yeah. um, match game. Yeah, match yeah. game. Yes. It's like yeah, it blank game, willow. So. Oh, the yes. only thing on my mind is pussy. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, you can't say big cock. He's like, big cock out of your mouth sounds weird. He's like, you can say big cock coming out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah. And it's a great moment. And then, of course, Paul Giamatti. So this is where they needed script approval for everything. Right. Um, and yeah, Paul's just like, where was I? Where was my script? And uh, Robin, you know, takes the fall for it. He just like shit cans. There's a lot of wonderful just Paul Giamatti running down the hall. <laughs> yeah, you're he's right. Like, he's oh, constantly he's like, sprinting towards the We forgot to mention. <laughs> to propel himself out into the hallway. We forgot to mention like a big point. So WNBC, they, the reason Howard is there is that he took their entire DC market and they're like, can we sign him? And then they right, signed him yes. without looking into the show. And then the head of NBC is like, you sign this man without logic? And he fires all of them. But then he stuck with them because like they would have, what, they have to pay him out, buy him out of his yeah. contract? Yeah, so, so they signed him a three-year contract. This is the part that I wrote down. I'm like, is this real or not? 
It's he was number be. one in DC, so they brought him in mm-hmm. to to New York to be on their flagship station, WNBC in New York City, without ever hearing a second of his show. There's a three-year contract. That, that seems like that possible? A huge oversight. Yeah, how, how is that even possible? Parts, like. Yeah. Nobody legal. Nobody. Nobody, nobody wanted to check this. it out. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. crazy. I mean, for comedic purposes, for a movie, it's funny. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it leads to the funny thing. It was like you're fired. Oh, he just yeah. fires that room full of people. Yeah. Uh, but that's why, like, Howard's just not being kicked out. Like, they can't do it. They would have to pay like way too much. Also, isn't it odd that they hire him because he's got these ratings? Yeah. yeah. Then they bring him to New York, and then they they are like, "We're gonna make sure he doesn't do any of the stuff that he was doing down there. We're gonna totally change him. We gotta sanitize but, it to make it cleaner." But then when he gets the ratings, they don't care anymore. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, so, yeah. Wait, so wait, yeah. If it is just no. about ratings, then why did you make such a to do about all right. of this in the first place? It's almost as if radio never knew what they were doing. <laughs> yeah. Just stumbled into something yeah. great for a decade or so. Yeah. And then reverted back to sucking. Here's some music. Here's the, the top, al- also the other thing I love is just this boardroom of like faceless suits yeah and now at the end of this movie it's like yeah nbc is still a bunch of dickheads but they're okay <laughs> with them now yeah, like, right. i really like that it's yeah. he never like make some amends with them or he never has Correct. somebody come down and be like you're doing a great job we were wrong blah 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 it's like at no, the those fair- guys are assholes <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah um so yeah robin's pissed that howard won't stand up for it he's like right. i gotta stay here i gotta beat them and right okay yeah, yeah i get it uh but they replace her with some old guy Who's done some summer stock? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was like that real proud of his summer great. stock. Yeah, that guy knows the role he's playing, and he does a great job. Yeah, he's, he's just like, oh, I'll be your newsman. And he's yeah. like so not prepared for the show. Uh, I love they call Pig Vomit's wife. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, I think he needs more sex. He's like, really? You think? And he's like freaking out. Yeah. He's like, you ruined the sanctity of my marriage. <laughs> That's a great scene when he's here. He's in the bathroom. Yeah, at yeah, the urinal, and he's hearing this happening. He's like, what the? F-? He's What's just even better out. is the guy at the urinal next to him. He's is like, laughing. Oh my god, yeah. are you hearing this shit? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good scene. Yeah, and it, just his freak out afterwards. Yeah. He's like, you're the goddamn Antichrist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> his screaming. I can listen to Paul Giamatti scream for like hours. It's just yeah, it's so perfect. funny. It's I, perfect in this movie. And just the fact that um, Poppy's always just boozing, trying to play Peacemaker is really fun too. Yes. Uh, so he, yeah, he's trying to go too far so he can say, well, Robin would reel me in. Yep. He has the curl deep throat, the kielbasa. <laughs> yeah. Just uh, great. Yeah, and I just love the old guys react. Like, he's not prepared for it. And there's a tour going on, by yes. the way. Yes, yep. And the tour guide is Leslie Bibb. The tour that, that's Leslie who we're trying Bibb. to figure out. Yeah, she's famous. Yeah. Yes. It's her first, like, uh, theatrical film role. But she, okay. like, went on to be in, like, the Marvel movie. Yeah. She was on The mm-hmm. League. Uh, right, right, right. The League, She was yes. Pete's ex-wife. Um, yeah, she's in a ton of shit. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I didn't. I was looking up like the film facts, like Leslie Bibb, and I'm like, what? And then I'm watching the movie. I'm like, holy shit, that is yep. her. She has a very, a very ni- short, very '90s short haircut. She yeah. looks like Susan from later episodes of Seinfeld. One yeah. of his kids is like a girl from Modern Family. The, which I'm the, like, uh, Howard's baby at the end is Sarah uh, the Hyland. The baby? I think it's the baby or one of the little girls. I guess mathematically that might work out. The baby. I yeah, I think it's the baby. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she's went on to be the older sister on Modern Family. So like, oh, and. For horror fans, uh, Howard talked about this a lot. Eli Roth, the director Eli Roth, mm-hmm. when he became famous and everything would go on Howard, Sto- uh, Howard Stern show, he talked about how he was Howard's assistant on this movie. Right. And when he was the assistant on this movie, he was writing the script for Cabin Fever. Wait, yeah. what? Yeah, he was. His, he would like drive him around and stuff. Yeah. Eli Roth. Oh, oh, sorry. I thought you meant he was in the movie. No, as no, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Is that no, a no, deleted no. scene that I? He was like, he was like working <laughs> okay, in film it. and okay. stuff. But yeah, he yeah. he would like drive Howard around, and that's he was writing Cabin Fever at that point. And then wow, okay. I'm not the biggest Eli Roth fan Neither of his am I. movies, Don't but like I like his insight on film. Like when he goes on Joe Bob show, I'm like, wow, this guy actually yeah. knows his shit. I wish I enjoyed his movies more. But anyway, so yeah, the studio, they're just like, okay, we we should probably bring Robin back because Howard is doing the news by himself. And yeah, do you yeah. want to talk about the scene where he's talking about the, the Prince of Monaco? It's it's just Princess really great Monaco. how he's like, is it Monaco or Monaco? <laughs> and he's talking to nobody. He's like, oh, Mon- yeah, I thought it was Monaco. Yeah, like, oh, like, she's dead. Yeah, he, I, I, love the, I love the pause. He goes, yeah, well, she's dead. Monaco? That's what I thought, Monaco. Well, anyway, she's dead. Uh, that was the princess from Philadelphia, right? But then, wait, what? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah Princess Grace. Yes, yeah, yes. Grace Kelly. Some prince Grace came Kelly. here and met it. But Grace how Kelly. It took, how it took forever for me to think of Grace Kelly? I'm like, um, that was yeah, like a weird course, thing. Some like royalty came is. here, met some chick here, and then yeah. she became a princess in Monaco. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay. 
I guess that's the thing. It was like, I'm going to find the most attractive woman in Hollywood and take her back. But that's also (laughs) great because Howard Stern doesn't stop it there because you can hear him talking. He's like, well, she is getting up there and losing her looks. There is. There's a chance he cut her brakes. This is amazing. (laughs) And the whole time they're trying to have a serious discussion, they should bring Robin back. He's just going and going and going. Uh, but yeah, he does, um, he does get her back. She's like selling it again. They're just finding people. But how does he know that she's a real estate agent and at that particular house at that Movie time? convenience? Well, no, I thought she was showing her apartment. I thought she was trying to get someone to sublet so she could oh. leave New York. Oh, I thought she was a realtor. I read this the same I thought she I was did. a realtor. Yeah. Cause it, it looks like that. But then she goes, I'm trying to show my apartment. Oh, oh, I missed that. I think that's what was going okay. on. Okay. I thought she was saying I'm leaving. trying to show this apartment. I, I don't know. Whatever. I totally missed that part. So. I could yeah, be wrong. There I you was, go. Because I expected him to like bust in on her at some other radio job and drag her out of the studio. <laughs> right, 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 exactly. But no, he, I guess he knows where she lives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's way better. Just right. oh yeah, He burst in where she lives yes. and drags her out and kisses her feet and shit. And um, it's very cute. It's again, yeah. like a wonderful scene between these two playing off of each other. Yeah. When he's down there, he's like, I actually really like it down here. This is pretty great. <laughs> uh, they play it so well. And and Robin is great in that scene. Yes. She, she acts like she would act. Yep. When you play yourself, it shouldn't be that hard. No. But I just don't have a ton of respect for Robbins. I'm blown away. <laughs> like, holy crap. But she's pulling this and off. This is why I think she's really good because when she is being interviewed, she's playing it almost as a different character. And yeah. I'm like, wow, this is kind of amazing yeah. that Robin is able well, to do this. That was one of the things that, that was a takeaway for me because when you see people who don't normally act and they pull it off in a movie, that's directing. Yeah. That's yeah, a good yeah, director. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Right there. That's a director who's getting the most out that, of the talent. That kind of directing scores you the sequel to Alvin and the Chipmunks. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good point. Hey, Hollywood is Hollywood. What are you going to do? <laughs> Female director. I always forget that part. Yep. Like You wouldn't picture that for this type of no. movie. Right. But it works. It works. It works. I never forget it because Howard Stern said those all names <laughs> yeah. all the time oh, for yeah. five to six years straight. Yep. <laughs> God, could you imagine doing that show? every day and then running to set to film all the other god that oh, had to be fucking crazy. miserable no. um so yeah then we get well the- he did get a divorce not long after that <laughs> right. so i'm guessing it took a lot of his time <laughs> he's like he i had to miserable. sacrifice something for this film <laughs> yeah when did he start well i know he had a couple tv shows but when did he start like the big one like the, the e show channel not oh oh the e show yeah Boy, I don't. That even was in know. the '90s. The, the E show was just his radio show, though. He didn't. Yeah. It didn't take extra work, like the, like the Channel, the Channel Nine, 9 was different. Oh yeah, yeah. that they was a more of a sketch thing, and right? Stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, the E show was just they filmed the radio <laughs> show. Right. That's when uh, he did uh, blackface to make fun of what's his uh, Ted Danza's blackface. Oh yeah, yeah, correct. Yep. Uh, and then people found it recently, and they're trying to cancel Howard for wearing blackface, even though he was pointing out how ridiculous it was for Ted Danza, right. which, yeah. by the way, was a joke made by Whoopi Goldberg. She planned that whole thing, so I'm like, this is weird. And you can't cancel someone if they barely ever show up to do their job. That's <laughs> yeah, true. He's like, I'll be taking the next three months off, and then after that, it's yeah. one day a week, guys. But I still need to be on the radio. It's like, just <laughs> fucking stop. Um, yeah, so the Jenna Jameson scene, we talked about it earlier, yep. just the most naked it's scene ever. amazing. Uh, I love how he's like breaking down, he's breaking history in radio. He's like, first naked girl on radio, which one do you think about? It's like, who the fuck cares? Like, there's no visual element no. at this point. But, but back I, then, that was a big deal. Yeah. yeah. And I remember listening to things like that and imagining what was happening sure, in the of course. studio. Yes. So it was so cool to actually see, like, he's on the floor and he, you know, I was like, oh, how often does he grab the mic and just yeah. wander around? Mm-hmm. And so it was really neat to actually see I that. And they're taping newspaper up on the window <laughs> so people right, can't yes. see yeah. it. Yeah, and now that's where we got to give him credit. Sutter and John would have had some curtains in this scene. <laughs> <laughs> there are so many curtains in one too many listen to our commentary track on our yeah. patreons you'll hear about the movie with a million curtains <laughs> patreon.com slash who are these even, podcasts even when you came in i was just like did you notice all the curtains you're like yeah there was, I was like i can't believe this i'm not gonna take notes but all these curtains every set is a blank room and they just throw curtains anyway, yeah. um, <laughs> amazing the way his apartment's decorated yeah. guys i all right let's move on but sorry, still, sorry. tony actually about. had a really good idea when we were doing the audio commentaries like they should have named this movie curtains and it should <laughs> yes. have been the end of john's career <laughs> <laughs> perfect yeah, but also great. working okay. the movie anyway um I mean, so I kind like of was the end of it. Yeah, yeah, exactly it's why it works you didn't really recover after it's why it works <laughs> more on patreon um so I like that uh, Pig Vomit installs like a red phone that'll light up and let the engineer by lane. Like, I know Howard Stern is like a superhero fan, but this reminds me of Batman with the red phone. Yep. He's like, when I ring the red phone, you take him off the air and put a record on. And this then is an overly 
complicated. Yeah. <laughs> like, I but understand right. your office is a million miles away. The fact that you have to run yeah. for days to get yeah. there. But still, this seems quite ridiculous. Yes, but I like it because they, they go off the air. Howard's like flipping out. <laughs> he just starts running through the office. Yeah. And the fight with him and Pig Vomit is fucking hilarious because you just hear it's them amazing. yelling and then you hear the delay on the radio. <laughs> hey, he hit me, Robin. She's hit me. Get out. I'm going to hit you back. I hit him back. Well, the the other thing with this scene is it's such an iconic like Howard Stern scene, like yeah. battling the executives yeah. live on the show. This has been done by every single radio guy since this sure, happened. Yeah. And it's all fake. Yeah. It, none of it's real. I'm yeah. sure when Howard did it, it was real. But everyone tries to reproduce like this moment of like, it's, yeah. it's us versus them. Yeah. They're the yeah. executives and program directors. Because like, it really is for the, for the amount of time they continued to talk about pig virus once he was gone. Mm -hmm. You knew they legit oh, yeah. hated this dude. Oh, yeah. Like, you can't fake oh, wait, that much that. We were talking about 90s wrestling. 90s wrestling started doing the same thing. Right. It's like man and Stone Cold. Yep. And now, even to this day, every other wrestling promotion, the CEO just can't be a guy. They have to be part of the show. Yes. For some reason, because I guess it worked out. But now I'm thinking about it, I'm like, Holy shit, this is the Stone Cold Vince McMahon oh. story. Yeah, or, like, or Triple H and Vince or McMahon. Or Triple H and Vince McMahon. Yeah, right. It's like, oh, well, or anyone in Vince exactly, McMahon. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Listen, I said, I asked you to have me back on at some point. Don't have me on for a wrestling show. I don't know anything. I'm, uh, I'm going to have you on letting... for wrestling. Right. Um. <laughs> Last time I watched wrestling, The Rock was a bad guy. <laughs> oh, wow, okay. <laughs> I'm not sure when that was. <laughs> 98, dude. Uh, I, remember. Uh, Doug, I remember Doug, when Doug. I stopped Doug. watching. Doug, they're called Heels. Thank you. Yeah, bad guy. Come oh, on. it's a face and a heel. What are you doing? Fucking Embarrassing noob. yourself. Anyway, on YouTube. Let's, let's right. get back to this. I've never actually watched wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> I do like when he hits Kenny. He's like, Kenny just hit himself in the face. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> or that one's called, he like hits uh, Poppy and he's like, oh, he just hit him too. He's what did he crazy. hit him with? Like a gigantic Emmy? The, I didn't <laughs> yeah, know what that thing award. was. It was enormous. Yeah. Um, I love when Howard goes on uh, Letterman and he has yeah. a strike against NBC yep. show, shirt on. And he's like, yeah, we both work for NBC on the radio. He's like, yeah, they're awful. I hate them. And the execs are like, he makes so much about the ratings. He's number one. It's like, what are we going to do? This movie wraps up like a whirlwind. Yeah. Like I forgot how quick it was to yeah. like, he's the worst person. We love him. We're out. We're done. The yeah. end. Roll credits. It is. It's wild. It does happen very quickly. Yeah. And I was telling, we were just watching this scene uh, before we started recording this. And I was talking to Doug about this. Why wouldn't they find the actual footage from the David Letterman show yeah. with Howard and put I that guess, in the movie? I guess because the conversation wasn't what that maybe. was. They had to like recreate. Well, yeah, that. They, yeah, they probably changed it up a little bit. Um, because oh, that would have been cool if you take like like I love when movies do that. Take like oh, real yeah. footage mm, yep. and yeah. pop it into the mm. movie, and because it it is about real events that happen. Well. You mentioned American Splendor. I don't know if you ever saw that movie. No. About the uh, alternative. Paul Giamatti's great in it, but it's about this alt, com alt, uh, alt comic guy, Harvey Picar, and he would go on Letterman he would all draw the time. Comics, wasn't but, like, but the movie switches back between Paul Giamatti playing him and then the real Harvey Picar yeah. showing up. Oh, weird. And then they'll reenact certain bits and then they'll play just clips. I love the movie starts. He's just like, this is the guy they got playing me, but I don't know why. He looks nothing it, like me. It is wild movie. to see how different it's these two movie. look. But anyway, we're really start reviewing See, what up. they should have done is had Jeff Goldblum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to talk about what the sequel to this was going to be that he teased. Anyway. Okay. Um, so, yeah, uh, Allison is pregnant again. Uh, and I like how she's becoming, like, real embarrassed by the show. Yes. Like, yeah, like yeah, when yeah. they're playing, like, the naked girl and stuff. She's, and she's in the car with her mother. Was yeah. any of that oh, explain wait, who those I, ladies were It in has the car? to be her mom, because her mom, the, she's just like, yeah, you know, these houses are up for sale uh, with divorces. So a lot of people are getting divorces this week. <laughs> like, it was, yeah. like, one of those things, which was pretty funny. Well, also, so Allison is upset with Howard for mm. talking too much about their personal lives, but also because he's like, got girls on there and stuff like that. And Allison makes this statement. She goes, I can't even go to my salon anymore. I'm like, who the hell in the salon is listening to the Howard Stern show? Yeah, really. You can't find a salon with women who don't listen to Howard Stern? Who would right. know what his wife looked like? <laughs> right. right. Who would even know it's Allison yeah. from? Like, I've seen pictures of her, and, like, if she's not standing next to Howard Stern, yeah, I don't, you don't think know I would is. recognize her. Right. I would understand if she's going to a barber shop. And sure. they're like, uh, yeah. you know what, lady? We listen to your husband all the time. Right. Yeah, I thought that was Like, what's going on? Is... is his wife now, she was like a supermodel and stuff. I guess you could recognize her. Oh, yeah, for sure. But like... Beth Allison? was never a supermodel. Well, I mean... She was a model enough to do... I think she did beer commercials for a little bit. She was on Letterman. I think I have an old FHM oh, really? of her okay. somewhere. 
Yeah, well, she was on. Yeah. She was, was on that Letterman after show. She was Mrs. Howard Stern, or before? Before the wedding, that's but when very she was different. dating him. Okay. Well, remember he like oh, wouldn't right. marry her for like years Correct, and years yeah. and years. Yeah, um, that was rough when that show just became people that worked there walking and going, "How would your girlfriend so hot? Yeah. She's so hot." <laughs> Can we just talk about that for a while. I don't know who that yeah. was. Who that <laughs> no, was. a bunch of them. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds right. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, now is where he's where you're right. Pig vomit is like, oh man, we're gonna do great stuff, Howard. Because now he realizes he's stuck with him and it works. So what an abrupt! Like I was like, there must be scenes missing here. Yeah, I'm sure yeah, it does him. feel like there's yeah. something yeah. trimmed out. Yeah. yeah, it feels like it's a little trimmed. Because the way this the ends, end. I'm like, do they still work together? Are they <laughs> friends? <laughs> yeah, right, right. Like yeah. if I didn't listen to the show, I would have no idea what's happening right now. Yeah, I do. Like it just like he just says fuck you, which is what <laughs> I miss said to Howard. And Howard is weird, like a weird old guy. Like I miss now. He predicted his future. Man, I get it now. <laughs> yes, it all makes sense. But don't you guys think that that's really weird that the ratings come in and now everything else is fine? Yeah, all yeah. of these things that have happened. Yeah, where they're like, we can't have this guy on our radio. We can't have him on the airwaves. He's embarrassing the station. Oh, he's got a, a six nine. Oh, okay. Well, then yeah, it's yeah. Fine. Doesn't if make you, any if sense. If you pull in enough results, uh, you can get away with a lot more. That's how it works. And also, to your speaking point, of YouTube, but you like. You get demonetized for stuff, right, on YouTube? Right? I, I have. Yeah, yeah. But then you have, like, <laughs> Logan Paul, who can literally film himself making fun of a dead kid, and he just makes a shit ton of money. So the more successful you are, the more lenient you get. I don't get. know if that worked out too well for Logan Paul. No. But yeah, he's no, a no. multi-millionaire. He, <laughs> no, he, he I, got I so much more yeah. money, and he still has a YouTube channel. I'm just saying. I hear you. The more successful you are, the more the people at the top will be like, all right, we'll let that go. We'll let right. that go. But also, I was like... How much time has passed? Right. Are these the very it's like the first, first ratings? ratings? Book. Is it like three months? Like they come out yeah. quarterly. Right. Yeah. This is all. And why is there a big three month period? Did this he do crazy. like a big like concert thing to oh, celebrate? These, well, yeah, but I don't know when that took place. Like I was like, maybe yeah. this is two years later. I'm not even sure. Yeah, yeah it is weird. That, when did the Channel Nine sh show start? Because none of that's in here. Maybe that's later. Because that's later. Oh, yeah. the, the story yeah, ends later. in 1985 and then wraps yeah. up in 1990. Okay, yeah. Yep. So they were probably saving that for the sequel. Uh, but yeah, Allison has her baby, uh, and the story finishes. He decides he's going to be faithful to Allison and not sleep with that girl on the plane. Yeah. Although I don't know how he would have time to do that because Allison is meeting him at the air. I guess he could have gotten her number or something. It's it's a very like eh. I know I could bang this woman. Um, I totally get it. I mean, I am Howard Stern. I just mentioned to her for the three-hour flight how famous I am. So, yeah. of course, I could get And he's front cover of the newspaper. Right. That's a pretty big yeah. deal, too. Yes, you're right. We got to cover Fartman. I need more stories on Fartman. <laughs> yeah. Wait, wait. Do women love when guys talk about how famous they are? <laughs> nope. Yeah, I mean, they have to have the money to back up that. Oh, right. Well, they have to actually Patreon. be famous. Patreon.com slash movies. Because I think this movie ends uh, with him saying, oh, and also I'm a millionaire to her. Yeah, so yeah. Think, we have a merch store. Uh, what else do I have? Uh, I have no idea what you have. I have a lot of stuff. Uh, please buy. I need I need to be the next Howard Stern. You have a framed, I'm calling it now. I'm going to be the next Howard Stern. framed image that. of Laura Palmer that I've been eyeing up to steal two of this <laughs> of stuff you're going to be missing after this. My Laura Palmer, the shirt that I made where I look like Laura Palmer, still not on Teespring. They took it down for no reason, and they won't put it back up. And I'm not... Mm. The, the, Maybe because it wasn't selling? <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Maybe that's why. Really well. <laughs> They're like, it's not selling, and I think it's a mistake. Yeah, I think, <laughs> you, I think you fucked up the design of this one. We'll just take it down for you. It's fine. I love that shirt. Fuck you. My grandmother has a giant blanket with my face of that. This is terrifying, man. At the when I first saw this movie, this is like now post credits and mid credits sequences. They have existed for a long time, mm -hmm. but this is the most I've ever seen in the movie. Like, there's oh, the movie ends with Stutter and John. Yes, this uh, is cameo. Yeah, horrible scene. Should have cut it out of the movie. They agree it ruined the movie. Guys, I did this wrong. I watched the credits and the bloopers. Of stuttering John's movie, I turned this off the moment <laughs> the moment ACDC yeah. came oh. out. I was like, nah, all right, I'm dude. Done. Our commentary track isn't even the full movie. As soon as the credits started, yeah, we we're like, right, yeah, we're it's, tapping it's out, enough. we're tapping out. All right, okay. yeah, I know. I talked to you about the bloopers, and you're like, I didn't see it. Yeah, I'm like, you just did a commentary, dude. <laughs> I don't care about that. <laughs> so I remember in the theater when I went to see this movie, and stuttering John comes on, he does that thing. Oh, I wasn't in the movie. Yeah. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I thought it was good. Yeah. I thought it was a good bit for him. But now that he got it worked into the movie. Lawsuits, how does that color? Well, now, that he, now that he wants to sue me and, and take all my sweet, sweet YouTube money, you know? It's... You know what's weird? He uh, he blocked me like a year or two ago, and then I'm unblocked by him. Really? 
I, I, I guess I poked fun at him, but like, how did I get unblocked? Is he I like, was going to say, I don't think he spends a ton of time unblocking people. Yeah, that's, that's not what's something bizarre. I, think do. I don't know why. I'm like, uh, why would he unblock me? I only ever made one joke and then I got nuked from him. But yeah, hmm. anyway. It's weird that he's not suing Ivan Reitman's ghost or something like that. <laughs> like, that's kind of surprising. He just made a movie with his son. Why can't he throw me some money? I was in his movie. <laughs> I could have played Slimer or whatever the hell it's called this time. <laughs> <laughs> the blue Slimer. Um, but yeah, uh, like I said, Sutter and John has a whole chapter in here. He's just not in the movie. Yeah. Um, then we get the fart man. Now, like the fart man dummy falling on set. It's clearly a dummy, not a real person. How do you feel about that gag? I didn't watch the credits. I don't yeah. know what's going How on How do you right feel now? about that gag? <laughs> I don't remember that part. <laughs> he, that, it's, that uh, the, the post, the mid credits is yeah. like he wins the Oscar. It's like the next year. It's like the Academy Award nominees. Oh. It's like Tom Hanks stands up and then he wins and he comes down as fart man. Oh, that's fun. And then he falls and he looks like a dummy. Yeah, that's fun. I have a running gag where we throw dummies on the set. And everyone's was like, stop doing there? that. I'm I like, that's funny. You. That's funny. <laughs> it's always funny. Because <laughs> um, it looks like someone got hurt. So of course yeah. it's funny. Yep. I keep telling people, I'm like, hey, that gag worked for like 10 years of Married with Children. I'm not stopping <laughs> anytime soon. Um, and then the very, very end is where we circle back to pig vomit and he's out of the radio business, uh, and he's just cursing and he keeps being censored by nearby construction. Yes. <laughs> like wow. every time he curses, I tried every fucking thing I could fucking think of. It's like, eh, and at the end, it's just like a million sounds are going off because he can't stop cursing. Man. All right. I think uh, I can watch just the credits yes it's good uh but yeah and the movie ends and it's really good it did well it got the it got him that awesome rob zombie song that he that's true when i was still, still listening to it. it was he was still using that as his 60th theme. birthday party they the band was there playing it live oh, oh that's cool okay it was pretty cool the i'm sure he still man. uses it um yeah he does so changing anything here's my question yeah, yeah. Because now we all know what Howard Stern became and, and how his career went. Yeah. And he got really upset when he lost Robin, obviously, and he had to get Robin yeah. back. Yeah. Why? What is Robin? Is it so we can just make <laughs> racist jokes? Is it, did he just need like the a movie black leaves woman? that now? The movie leaves that. Yeah. yeah you don't yeah. hear you don't hear a lot of that part of yeah. this show, do you? Oh, I just talk about lesbians. Well, <laughs> talk about a few other things. Too, <laughs> yeah. You know? He has a whole chapter <laughs> on uh, certain <laughs> topics in this. I'm like, yeah. Hey, I mean, I, I think I don't know if you want a serious answer here, but I really do think that this movie shows that they do have a clear rapport. Mm -hmm. I, I do think he wanted her back because they worked well together. But like you said. He can make racist jokes. He can make jokes about women. I think it's more and about it's that. Always, and she always giggles. Yeah. And she it's always, always kind of like, well, the, you know what? Host is that fine makes with sense because he's yeah. replaced so many other people. Why didn't he want to replace her? Correct. Right. right. Yeah. 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 It doesn't no. matter. I mean, just her and Fred are the only two that have you yeah. Know, yeah. always been there. But yeah. anyone else, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, um, so he talked about how he wanted to do a sequel to this because he has written follow up books. What is it? Miss America. Miss America. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He wrote another one recently, but um, correct. But the, the latest one he did is just transcripts from interviews. Oh, OK. For the most part, I guess he, he added a few things, but it's mostly just his radio show. Oh, in okay. book form. Cool. The laziest thing possible. <laughs> That's terrible. I couldn't imagine. Watch, look out for WATP, the book. Oh, coming out this I, I guess if you don't want to hunt down every episode, it'd be nice to have like a written form. But yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, so he talked about how the intro to the second film. Have you ever seen video of Howard Stern on the PD Green show? No. Mm, don't play me. Don't play video of this. I don't even know uh, It was is. a public access show. They okay. made a movie about PD Green and Don Cheadle played him. Okay. Uh, but he was a black guy and Howard went on a show in legit blackface pretending to be Petey Green in front of Petey Green. Petey Green was a good sport about it. He thought yeah. it was funny and everything, but that's how the second movie was going to start oh. and Robin was going to come in and be like, I don't think this is a good idea. That would have been great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll look up um, the Petey Green movie. I forget what it's called, but uh, I went back and I watched that video. I'm like, this is really funny, but yeah, I don't, I don't think any <laughs> studio would allow this. No. Um, but yeah, they never made a sequel. He talked about it for you, but he talks about so much shit and then he never does. Oh yeah. No, I, I think that in a lot of ways, you talked about the schedule that he was on. I, I think it really did affect his life. Yeah. I think that he, because he was doing the radio show, should have just taken off from the radio show and just made a movie. Yeah. yeah. But because he was doing both things at once and you know, he, even when he fi finally went on and did that TV show on NBC. America's Got Talent. America's Got Talent. Yep. He forced them to move the entire production mm. yes. to New York. Everyone had to move for Everyone him. Everyone had yeah. to go to New York so they, yeah. they could film the show there for four years. Yeah. 
And they stopped doing the thing where they would travel to different cities to find the talent. And like, yeah. he got rid I remember of all Nick Cannon making fun of him on set. Yeah, like, yeah he got oh. us to move the whole show. Yeah. But I, I think that it's because this experience broke him yeah. in a lot of ways. Like, you can't make movies and be a morning show. Like, do yeah. a morning show is a lot. The of transition work. from like one type of medium to movies, it's rough. Some people can do it. Some people yeah. can do it. Well, I, I guess my my point is is that. I would never want to be a morning DJ. I don't get up at 4 a.m. Yeah. Oh, I, that's God, just, no. not, I just yeah. don't, I can't yeah. do that. So I'll, I'll pay hundreds of dollars extra for a flight that leaves at 11 yeah. as opposed to 6 a.m. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, ah, oh, whatever. I'm not going to be at the airport at 5.30 a.m. It's just not going to happen. <laughs> so I, I think that that probably yeah. is why he didn't go on to make, because he definitely had offers. This movie was successful. It was good. Everyone enjoyed it. He could have definitely made more movies. Yes, yes. Uh, he could have made more, but he made a very, very solid movie. He did. If, the, like, if he was going to make... A, it would have been a shame if he made another garbage piece yeah. of crap. If like, he was going to make one movie to like... I'm, I'm sure he's popped up it briefly in other stuff, but like, no, if he was going to make one movie Not to, much. What, no, Gary just, Shandling? Yeah, he doesn't show, do cameos. Larry Sanders, whatever that was. But yeah, if he like stars in... If you're yeah. going to make a movie that you're going to star in, it's going to be like your only big movie, sure. this is a good That's one That's a good to way have. to do it. It's a yeah. good one. It's a great movie. He's the hero in it. He's amazing. In every single way, so there you got he that. He's a flawed hero. He acknowledges yeah, the sure. things he does wrong. Um, yeah, you get a great villain with pig vomit. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's just an overall good time. And like I said, this movie went from being inspirational, and now I'm older. I'm like, it's oddly relatable. Uh, yeah. Minus the money part, patreon.com slash hack movies. Yeah. Uh, Listen to this guy bragging about the expensive flights he takes. Uh, <laughs> oh, my Patreon's taking off. Uh. <laughs> I was sitting in, guys, get this, the 14th row on my airplane flight. Uh, to Whoa. Whoa. I know. It's, Did they know who you were? My, they must have. They must I have recognized me. See, sir. I, see, I sit in the back because I want to remember what it was like, my humble beginnings. <laughs> Is that <laughs> why? Okay. It's like sir, George would you, like, would you like a free water? Uh, <laughs> I like what George right this way. says. I want episode i'm like i was friendly with the waitress so she see i can go with the commoners <laughs> it's like, it's above them. anyway that is it from us for the uh howard sir movie private parts one of my favorites uh we're gonna sign this and give this away to a fan awesome yeah, love sure. it sure uh and i'm gonna upgrade blu-ray uh, but yes carl where can we find you uh, who are these dot com cool. is our website which has links to all of the different things our discord server where we record the show and our Patreon, where you can actually now watch us stream it live every Saturday at 2 Ooh. on YouTube. We're streaming it now, if you want to check that out. Also, I should mention The Creep Off. Yes. A oh. show I do with my buddy Vinny Paulino. It's a true crime show for men. It's the only true crime <laughs> show made for men However, to enjoy. However, we'll point out, our editor Jessica became a fan of the that's show. That's awesome. Loves, yeah, hey. that's really cool. So right. the premise of The Creep Off is we each bring in a creep based on some type of criteria. Yeah. You know, and whether that criteria is like a plumber, the creepiest plumber or the creepiest person from Idaho, whatever it is. And then Vinny and I will give our reasons why we found the biggest creep. Mm -hmm. People go and vote on our website. And then after someone gets to five points, the other person has to spin the wheel of consequences and yes. you have to do ridiculous <laughs> stuff. Yes. Apparently, you're supposed to do them on time, but I yeah. guess there's like an issue. Uh, like I, get real, I get real bad. I'll do my consequences. They get done eventually. I did watch the. Uh, you you watch the, Carl Hamburger. Yeah, I saw the Carl Hamburger one. <laughs> That's pretty dogs great. Like, uh, Doug, uh, where can we find you? Good times, great movies. Uh, yes. It's a website. Uh, I talk about '80s movies mm. and only '80s movies. You two guys were both on the show Correct. last summer. Yes. What did we do? Back to the Future Part Two. Back to the Future Two. One of my favorite movies to talk about. Roadhouse. Yes. Roadhouse, the greatest film ever made. I told you to stop your show after that. You did it. You got the best <laughs> '80s movie. <laughs> That's like, it. That's it. It's over. And I'm glad you're here because people occasionally are like, Tony, review Roadhouse again. I'm like, well, I did it on the old show in Cinemasker. And they're like, do it again. I'm like, and I always just link here. I'm like, there, I, I did it again. I, I did it twice. I see the numbers. There's a chance I did stop the show after that episode. <laughs> so, no, but Good Times, Great Movies, wherever you find podcasts. We have a website. You can find us. It's a fun show. The, the it's socials. a fun show. Yeah. And yes, thank you for watching. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. Call our voicemail line. Even though I never do the voicemail segment, I got to do it. And I'll leave a sub mail. And goodbye, everyone. Bye. I think Capcom does a great job when they're adding, like, collaboration characters. <laughs> I've never been able to extend this way. <laughs> oh, God, I gotta get the helmet on. Oh, God, oh, God. Wait a minute. Our guy's a bad guy the whole time. I just think it's crazy that I'm better at video games now than when I was, like, 16. That is how you fix all the problems with all these games. I feel like toy distribution is so different than it used to be. They re-sculpted over the chest. They gave him a flak jacket over it. I laugh when I see Among Us, but I'm not having fun inside. I'm just, <laughs> it's a reflex. No, you took my <laughs> jar! <laughs>
Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our other videos and Patreon page. Talk, talking, talking about tapes.